Hello, everyone, and welcome to our 1988 Atlanta Coast Conference season opener. I'm Kevin Slayton to call the play-by-play -play for you each week this season. And joining me alongside former Duke All-American quarterback Ben Bennett. And we have a contrasting style of quarterbacks here today that Ben will shed some light on. A freshman for Virginia Tech, Will Fuhrer, making his first start ever. And he goes against the veteran Rodney Williams for Clemson, Ben, who has started 31 times. Well, the thing that Rodney Williams does for you is he wins football games. He's a very solid performer. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes, and he runs that machine as well as any quarterback could ever be asked to. Will Fuhrer, on the other hand, is at the other end of the gamut. He's a redshirt freshman. This is his first snap. Although he's 20 years old, he could have picked a better place to open up. He's playing one of the top-ranked teams in the country, and he's playing in probably the most difficult stadium in the country to win at. High expectations for this Clemson team. They're ranked number four in the country. Danny Ford said, we don't know if we're that good. Well, you know, they're coming off a great season last year. They were 10-2. and two. They played strong in the Citrus Bowl and beat a good Penn State team. They come in here with a high national ranking. They're shooting for the stars. They think they've got a legitimate shot at a title this year. It's a team of veterans, Clemson. They have 18 returning starters from that 10-2 and two team against a team of youngsters, Virginia Tech. They will start only one senior this afternoon here in Death Valley. We talked to Will Fury yesterday, and he said, the game's played on the field. It's not played in the stands, but, Ben, you differ with that. Well, you know, I've played here a couple of times, and I've played in a lot of different stadiums, and I started my first game as a freshman, too. He's coming into a tremendously difficult situation, and I, and I hope his confidence will show through and let him play a good game. But like I said, this is a tough, tough place to play football. All right, joining us along the sideline to help us cover today's action is Chris Allen, and he'll be roving with reports all afternoon. Let's go down to Chris now. Thank you very much, Kevin. I want to talk about the kicking game because this is the one part of the football team in which Coach Danny Ford takes direct control. He has no assistant coach as far as kickers go. And with that in mind, he has had some real success in the past. Last year in particular, talking about a walk-on who eventually became an All-American with a great last season. The site is Blacksburg, Virginia, 1985. David Treadwell is his name, his very first game ever in which he kicks against Virginia Tech. He tells me after the game, the first time he's ever kicked a football in a game in his life. I said, well, if I'd known that, we, <laughs> you wouldn't even been out there. Go back to the year 1986, and it was Bill Spires doing the punting just a couple of years ago against Virginia Tech. A blocked kick of the end zone turned into a touchdown and a Virginia Tech victory. 1987, just last season, it was Rusty Sile as the punter. He was a walk-on in 1984, and he is back again this year as a senior. Also going back to last year, once again, we can talk about David Treadwell, the All-American, against Georgia, the second consecutive season that his foot made a victory for the Clemson Tigers over Georgia. And this year, the left foot of Chris Kardaki is going to try and replace that of David Treadwell. He was actually recruited by Coach Danny Ford instead of being a walk-on. Now, one thing that I want to show you here is uh, an ad. This is an advertisement for kickers that Danny Ford put out at one time. Rusty Sile was uh, all ready to kick her at this time. Youngsters came in, answered the call, but they did not make it as far as out of the football team. Now, after this, though, or actually before this, the man who answered the call to an ad that was in the paper was Bill Spires, who is now a baseball player professionally. He answered the call and did very well. That's the kicking game story. Ben, Kevin. Thank you very much, Chris. We'll be looking forward to watching that battle down on the field. Here come the Hokies of Virginia Tech. Two and nine a year ago in Frank Beamer's first year as head coach in Blacksburg. But they like the return of the four that got them to the Peach Bowl two years ago when they started the season, coming here to Clemson with an upset 20 to 14 victory. It was before that game that Virginia Tech taunted the Clemson Tigers when they came onto the field. They ran over to the hill where traditionally the Clemson Tigers come charging down prior to every game. It's a Clemson tradition, and Virginia Tech toyed with it. And then they handed the Tigers an upset in the process. And this afternoon, the tradition will continue as the Tigers have rallied across the way, rubbing the magical rock, Frank Howard's rock. He told the 1966 team it gives you supernatural powers if you rub it. Well, Ben, they're rubbing it. Did you guys rub anything at, Clem at Duke? We had a wall that said go blue, but unfortunately, <laughs> it, it didn't bring us the kind of success that the Rock has brought Clemson. 
I don't know if it really has anything to do physically, but I can tell you what, mentally, it gets those boys charged up, and they come off that hill ready to beat up somebody. This is the 200th time that the Tigers will charge down the hill. They've been doing it since 1942. They fill it as the most exciting 25 seconds in college football. Everyone on their feet in this stadium, 78,000 strong as you watch the cannon. That is the signal that will start the charge. All of the players will rub the rock as they come past it and then charge down the hill. And in the long and illustrious history of this tradition, only one man has fallen, and that was the trainer, Fred Hoover. So they haven't lost any players yet, Ben. I tell you what, watching from the field and seeing all those orange bodies come charging off that hill, I don't care how confident you are in your own team's abilities. That's an awesome sight, and it'll put goosebumps on your arms pretty quickly. And Virginia Tech has to watch as the Clemson Tigers charge down the hill. Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions presents exclusive live coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football. Today's game is brought to you by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. For insurance and financial services, better call JP. By Coors, the original draft beer in bottles and cans. Coors, the original. By Amico Ultimate Lead Free Premium. Amico, your car knows and by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Welcome back to Frank Howard Field in Clemson, South Carolina. The Hokies of Virginia Tech and the Clemson Tigers kicking off the 1988 season. It is overcast here in Clemson. And the temperature as we kick it off, 73 degrees. The wind should not be a factor. Fairly humid down there. They've been calling for rain all morning long. But it does not appear that it will materialize. The sun is trying to break through as you take a look at the skies. But they had a little drizzle here this morning, and it washed away as it always does when Clemson comes home to play football. Today's starting lineup sponsored by AC Delco. Automotive parts that don't just fit, they match. The backfield will be led by Rodney Williams. Terry Allen will be spelled by two other players at that tailback spot. Watch Tracy Johnson. He has a sprained ankle, and Jennings and Cooper will be the wideouts. Up front, some changes on the left side. Deulius will start in place of Ty Granger out with a muscle problem, but he will play. Harmon back. Pat Williams will start. Stacy Long will be the right tackle. He replaces Nunemacher. He is also out with a muscle pull, and Stacy Fields will start at tight end. Chris Kinzer will get set to kick it off for Virginia Tech. He is a story in himself. You heard Chris Allen talking about him before the game two years ago. Probably the finest kicker in the country. Had an off year last year, but he's ready to go today. And he'll be kicking off to two deep backs for Clemson. Wesley McFadden and Joe Henderson. McFadden the nearest to you. And we are underway. A short kick. He's going to come down at about the 20. Henderson gets close to the 30 before he is brought down on the far side. So a very short kickoff. Returned 11 yards by Henderson. And over there on the stop was Roger Garland, a freshman out of Hempstead, Florida. Rodney Williams, the senior, he started three bowl games in his career, played in three bowl games. He will run the Clemson offense today. Ben, it's always nice when you have a veteran out there to lead you onto the field, isn't it? That's a big plus. The fact that he's playing at home and he's starting out on the 30-yard line, both are, are big pluses in his favor. And he's going to throw on first down, and he goes over the middle, incomplete, intended for James Coley, the tight end. 
Williams hit him in a tough spot. He hit him in the hands, and Coley could not hold on. He initially wanted to go downfield to a split end who ended up being covered at the end of the play and came off nicely to the tight end. Unfortunately, he threw it just a little bit behind him. Our Delco starting defensive lineup, Shambly, Hill, Morata, and Witten. Hill and Morata are the two guys to watch. Herdman, Stokes, Cockrell, and Jones are the linebackers. In the secondary, Granby, Brown, and Rice. Second and ten. Johnson and Allen are the setbacks for Clemson. And they'll run Terry Allen through a gaping hole, but it closed in a hurry up from the secondary. Scott Rice, the junior safety out of Grafton, Virginia, and he closed that hole in a hurry. Ben, I thought Allen had a lot of room. Clemson's offensive line will probably do a good job most of the day opening big holes. The question is, how quickly can the Clemson backs get in there? And two, how quickly will the linebackers from Virginia Tech be able to fill those holes? Talking to Frank Beamer, the Virginia Tech coach yesterday, he said he thought Rice needed to be more aggressive against the run. I think he answered it there. It was a good play. Stop the potential big game. Gain of maybe a yard, so it's third and nine, and Williams will go to the air. He guns it outside for Cooper, and he dropped it. So maybe opening game jitters on the part of both Coley and Cooper, but Williams looks as though he is on target through the first series, but Clemson nonetheless will have to punt. You can see how fired up Craig Beamer is. Well, that was an interesting call on Clemson's part. Even had he caught the ball, I don't think he'd have had, I don't think he'd have had the yardage for a first down. Rusty Sile will come on to punt. You see Myron Richardson. He has dropped deep for the Hokies. So a very key first series announcement for Virginia Tech as Danny Ford looks on. Sile averaged 38 yards a punt last year. His long was 56. This end over end job is short. Richardson feeling it in his 36, but he's smothered in a sea of orange in a hurry. Stacy Fields, number 46, the tight end, down there to make the stop. 13-59 remaining here in the first quarter, and Death Valley will return for more college football on your ACC network in a moment. Sit back and enjoy this telecast from Death Valley. Clemson welcomes you to Death Valley. Ben Bennett, you've been welcomed here before. Will Fuhrer is making his first college start as quarterback of Virginia Tech and our AC Delco starting lineup. He'll have John Jeffries and Rich Fox in the backfield along with him, the veteran Myron Richardson, and then Nick Cullen, the other wide receiver. They're men up front. Todd Grantham and Glenn Watts on the right side of the two they like to run behind, and Brian McCall is the tight end. On first down, just shy of their own 40. They'll toss it back to Jeffries as he tries the right side and gets a couple. Doug Brewster, number 92, the sophomore out of Athens, Georgia, along with Mark Drag, number 85, the senior out of Charlotte. Chavis, Drag, and McCullough up front for Clemson. First time since 1980 that defensive line has been without one of the Perry brothers. Johnson, Taylor, Brewster, and Hatcher, the linebackers. On second down, he flips it out, and immediately, no room at all, Donnell Wolford, up from the secondary, the great senior All-American to make the quick hit, and you don't fool him very often. He leads one of the best secondaries in the country. Lot Beasley and Smith are back there with him. You know, it's important for uh, Fuhrer to start off and complete his first couple of passes. Unfortunately, you don't want to throw a pass and have your guy get knocked down for a loss of a yard. Tenth year for Danny Ford here in Death Valley. Third and nine for Fuhrer. He doesn't like this, and he rolls to his right. Great block to free him. He may have the first down. It appears that he does on the far side before Wolford was able to come up and knock him out of bounds. Great play by Will Fuhrer. He knew how far he had to go. And if you watch at the end of the play, he makes, as he moves outside, you'll see him avoid the rush, start to get upfield, and lift the ball up and pump fake. Right here, you'll see him do it and get the bandit back off of his feet and get around him and allow him to pick up enough yards for the first down. There's a flag down. There may have been a late hit after the play, and that's going to tack 15 more on. So Fuhrer has to give himself a little pump of confidence there as he picked up 10 yards on the play. And the first down, we were talking yesterday with Nick Cullen. As you first down. listen for the... Up Danny Ford not agreeing with the call, but nonetheless 15 yards tacked on. But Nick Cullen said what he likes most about Fuhrer is his ability to scramble. And he showed it there. First down for Virginia Tech. They run Fox the fullback. And he says hello to Richard McCullough, 
the senior right tackle who backed up Michael Dean Perry for three years. He's chomping at the bit to play his first start. Clemson's defense could potentially be one of the top five in the country this year. They've got a tremendous secretary, sec, secondary, and they've got a lot of speed at linebacker. I look for them to give Virginia Tech a lot of trouble this afternoon. Pickup of two, or call it three, in second and seven. They're inside the 35 of Clemson. Here goes Jeffries. If he can get outside, he had some room, but he didn't. John Johnson, the sophomore from LaGrange, Georgia, pleased Danny Ford with that play because there was room been outside had Jeffries been able to shake it away from Johnson. Uh, anybody that watched the Super Bowl last year will recognize that play. That's what took Timmy Smith to the 204 yards that he gained. That's called a counter trade. You try to pull the offside lineman and get flow away. Unfortunately, Clemson's pursuit was too quick. You see those numbers. They were ranked second overall in the country last year defensively. Big third and eight. They lost a yard on the play as Fuhrer gets time. Down the middle to Richardson. He has a first down, and then he came back, but he still has the first down before Richard Smith, the senior from Sparta, Georgia, brought him down. And Ben, if they can give Fuhrer that kind of time, he may do well. That was, that was a lot of poise on Will Fuhrer's part here. You'll see him take a shot right as he releases the ball, but he put the ball right on the money and got first down yardage. Virginia Tech is going to have to try very hard to keep Fuhrer out of this many third down and long situations. Pickup of 11. They're two for two in third down conversions. And they're down at the 23-yard line of Clemson. And here goes Jeffries up the middle. Not much running room there. Vance Hammond, number 90, the sophomore out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. There goes uh, replacements will come into the game, we might tell you quickly, all the time for Clemson. You saw that time Dorian Marriott will go into the ball game. Danny Ford will send lots of fresh bodies out there. Frank Beamer, on the other hand, knows that his team is outmanned in numbers. Virginia Tech is going to have to get its running game going early, or they're going to be all over fewer if he keeps having the pass. Second and eight, and he will run the draw with Fox, and he has some orange waiting for him as he gets inside the 20. Jesse Hatcher is there, number 55. And the first man to greet him was Johnson, number 12, the sophomore linebacker. This is one of the things that Virginia Tech is going to have to do to slow down the, the uh, Clemson rush. As they start to get upfield, if you draw them and screen them once in a while, it'll slow down their rush and keep the pressure off the cure. Third and six, a pickup of just a yard that time. They converted their first two. Let's see if the freshman can do it again. Here comes the blitz. He guns it out nearly complete to Jeffries, but a nice hit from Richard Smith broke up the play. Just a simple pick pass. What they're trying to do here is run the back out in man-to-man -man coverage and have him picked off by the two wide receivers up the field. Unfortunately, they didn't get a good pick on him. He got up there and was able to knock the ball down. It's a good, good defensive play. Chris Kinzer will come on. It'll be a 36-yard attempt out of the hold of Chris Boston. He could move into second place on the Virginia Tech scoring list if he's successful. And he is. The 36-yard field goal moves Kinzer into second place on their all-time scoring list, but a flag is down, and we'll await the call. Roughing the kicker. And this could make it interesting, Ben. This is always a tough call. You rarely, if ever, want to take points off the board. But being in this close and knowing that Kinzer is as dependable as he is, they may take a shot if they pick up the first down here, which they do, and try to put seven points on the board. Ruffin the kicker on the defense half the distance of the goal. First down. Courtney Mosey, the referee for today's game, giving us the call. And that's a big mistake from a veteran team. Now, the, the dilemma always, been is do you take three points off the board? Well, like I said, I think with Kinzer being as dependable as he is, and especially in as close as they are, they can give it a shot. The one thing they can't do here, though, is to turn the football over. They've got a chance for, a, for an absolute three points, and they've got a better chance at seven points if they turn the ball over. If they turn the ball over, they end up with no points. Let's see if we can find the guilty party with Donnell Wolford, and that was... Uh... <laughs> I've seen rougher hits go on the flag. I've seen rougher hits on a dance floor. That was a good acting job, but it worked. 
and it enables Virginia Tech to get first and goal inside the 10. Only 11 times has Danny Ford lost here in his 10th year. But one of those we mentioned was two years ago to this team. First and goal for the Hokies. Fuhrer. A diving catch. It's incomplete. Fox out of the backfield thought he had it. But the officials in perfect position to make the call. Will Fuhrer miss a great opportunity for a touchdown here. I think he saw his man so wide open, he tried to guide the ball, put it too far out in front. You see there's nobody around the fullback. Had he caught the ball, he'd have been able to turn up and score a touchdown. Frank Beamer, who played his college ball at Virginia Tech, graduating in 1969, hoping to return the Hokies to glory. Here's Fox, trying to left side, and he's pulled down in a hurry. Vince Taylor was there, number 58, the linebacker. And this Clemson linebacking core, Ben, comes at you with quick bursts of speed. Well, Vince Taylor, in addition to being exceptionally quick, is also a powerful, powerful young man. He bench presses 445 pounds. The key to stopping any kind of running game is to string out the plays. If you can make them run east and west rather than north and south, nine times out of ten, you're going to stop them from getting any big yardage. Taylor started ten games last year. Thurman goal, Fuhrer in trouble, and it's knocked away. It was intended for Fox again, and Taylor was the defender, and they'll force Kinzer now to do what he did a couple of minutes ago. Unfortunately, Chris Kinzer is going to be kicking from a lot sharper angle and from a lot closer in than he was. This is a lot tougher kick than the one he just made. And it's a momentum play. If he misses this one, the momentum will swing in favor of Clemson and their 78,000-plus backers. It'll put this crowd into a frenzy. 25-yard attempt. As I mentioned, he'll move into second place on the all-time Hokie scoring list. Did he miss it? He did. spoke about earlier there's always the possibility of when you take points off the board you may lose them forever 9 13 left we'll be back after this from your local ACC stations With Ben Bennett bringing you the best of college football here from Death Valley in Clemson South Carolina 9 13 left in the first quarter Virginia Tech had the ball for better than five minutes Ben but they kicked a field goal, took a roughing the kicker penalty. At first and goal, they were stopped, and then Kinzer missed the field goal. Now to an underdog in front of 78,000 people, what does that do to your psyche? <laughs> I can think of a lot more positive things that they could have done. But, you know, they haven't really – they've lost three points. They can bounce back. If they can stop Clemson here, they're still going to have good field position. They stopped the Tigers the first time. Johnson the backs behind Williams. Long count gives it to Tracy Johnson and he's dropped immediately. Jimmy Witten, a sophomore from Danville, Virginia, number 96, there to make the stop after he picked up two, maybe three. One of the big keys for Virginia Tech, both on offense and defense, is gonna is gonna have to be to not give up the big play. Make Clemson work for what they get and hope that they make a mistake somewhere along the way. Robbie Spector into the game at the top of the screen, the one wide receiver. Here's Jennings all alone, and he was able to hold on to the ball at the 35-yard line, and he has the first down. He wanted to go places with that ball. John Granby was late in coming up to make the hit. Rodney Williams may have two of the biggest targets in the history of college football to throw at. Here you'll see Keith Jennings bobble the ball around. Fortunately for Clemson, he was far enough downfield that he had first down yardage, even though he made the juggling catch and lost a few yards. He's telling him, I had it all along. And somebody as big as he is, I wouldn't argue. First down for the Tigers, just outside of their own 36. They'll run Tracy Johnson over the left side. Big hole this time. He carries a tackler with him across the 45 before he's brought down. Jack Jones along with Roger Brown there for the Hokies. But that is close to another Clemson first down. One of the keys to this Clemson offense is their wide receivers throwing blocks downfield. Tracy Johnson is a banger. If he can get into the secondary, he's going to do some damage. You can see down there uh, Hooper is keeping people off so Tracy Johnson can make the cuts and get past and pick up first down yardage. 
and it is a first down. Williams to the air on first down. Down the middle for Allen. He overthrew him. He had a step on Jock Jones. That may have been a touchdown had he not overthrown him. They had the isolation they were looking for. They had Allen on a linebacker. They sneak him out and roll away, and what he's trying to do is just lob the ball up. There's nobody between Allen and the goal line. Unfortunately, Rodney Williams just overthrew him by about a yard and a half. The big knock we've heard on Allen is that he doesn't have the breakaway speed. That may have been a little evident right there. Danny Ford told me yesterday that's the only concern he has, but he was able to break away in the Citrus Bowl, and he tripped up immediately. Tracy Johnson after the handoff, short yardage, perhaps two yards. But Danny Ford was telling me yesterday that, you know, the guy's deceiving Terry Allen is. He doesn't think he has that burning speed, but yet he got behind Penn State and stayed there. He got behind Georgia and stayed there. And nobody could catch him either one of those times. Well, Terry Allen has what's known as game speed. When you, when you time him into 40 in shorts and shoulder pads, he may not be blazingly fast. But when he gets a football in his hand, he knows how to get into the end zone. And when he spells that goal line, that's when the afterburners kick in. Third down and nine, Williams to the air under pressure. He just throws it away, well short of Gary Cooper. He saw lots of white jerseys in the person of Darwin Herdman and Scott Hill coming his way, and he wisely got rid of it. So a punting situation for Clemson. And Ben, thus far, if you're Virginia Tech, you're proud of the defense. They've done a good job. Let's hope that they can keep that up all day, which will keep them in the game. There is Myron Richardson. He drops deep. And Sile will come on to kick it away. You know, Kevin, in last year's game, the kicking game, gave Virginia Tech every opportunity to win the game. It gave them great field position four or five times. I know they're hoping they can get the same kind of plays this year. Much better punt this time, but Richardson wisely lets it go into the end zone. So a 52-yard punt from Sile, but you can chuck 20 off of that because they'll move it back to the 20. 6.59 remaining in the first quarter. We're scoreless, and we'll be back with more football in a moment. Back live in Death Valley, Kevin Slayton along with Ben Bennett. Scoreless here in the first quarter, the opening game of the year for both teams. And let's go down to the sidelines and join our colleague, Chris Allen. Thank you very much. You saw number 12 very active and busy on the last defensive set of plays for the Clemson Tigers. He is John Johnson, who as a true freshman last year, started at a very tough bandit position and ended up having problems as the season wore on. Now, he said to me a couple of weeks ago that he really felt more comfortable when he could kind of slide down into that four-point stance. So they've moved him with Jesse Hatcher now in the bandit position, and Johnny Johnson is over on the opposite end. It certainly paid off in that first set of defensive downs for Clemson. Kevin? All right, Chris, first down for Virginia Tech from their own 20, their first possession. Will Fuhrer hit on two of five for 11 yards, but he missed the big one when he had Fox all alone heading toward the end zone. He'll go to the air on first down. In trouble, down he goes, Vance Hammond. Just a sophomore from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Then he had time, but then he took too much time. Well, this is what's known as a coverage sack. He's looking for the 12-yard curl to a split end. When that's covered, he, he looks to his back, who's swinging out. Unfortunately, he was covered, too. He wisely pulled the ball down and took a sack rather than throw an interception. Loss of three. It'll be second and 13, and they'll run the draw with Jeffrey straight up the gut. He crosses the 20 to about the 22-yard line before he is brought down. And Otis Moore who just came into the game for Clemson, the defensive tackle from Augusta, Georgia, made the tackle. Again, if you run the draw plays and the screen plays well, you're going to slow up the pass rush like you saw on the last play. Unfortunately, Virginia Tech is not running them tremendously well right now. Third and nine. They're two of three in third down conversions. Pure scrambling out of there. Looks downfield and has Richardson, but it went in and out of his hands. Wolford was covering along with Richard Smith, but it went in and out of the hands of Richardson. It looked as though a catchable ball, Ben. See if this, Smith got a hand on it. This is a great play by Will Fuhrer. He stands back in the pocket and looks for his primary receiver. When things break down, he rolls out and doesn't panic. He throws a strike to Myron Richardson, who should have caught that ball for the first down. Smith did not get a hand on it. Heavy rush, a low kick from Fitzgerald. Coming down to Wolford at his 45. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. 
had as Darwin Herdman, number 88, was the first to get him. Donnell Wolford led the ACC in punt return yardage last year. Unfortunately, he didn't get a whole bunch of yards that time. 35-yard punt, 539 left. We'll be back with more in a moment. Back live, Kevin Slayton along with Ben Bennett. Clemson and Virginia Tech scoreless. Five and a half minutes left first quarter. Ben, as you see it so far, what do you think the keys to this game are for both teams? Well, initially, I think the keys for Virginia Tech, like I said, are going to be not to give up the big play. Make Clemson work for anything they get. And they have to get Will Fewer out of constant third and eight, third and nine situations. A poor punt by Fitzgerald gives Clemson excellent starting position here. They run it inside with McFadden, who is in there at fullback, number 22. Now, he is typically a tailback, but Clemson has had fullback problems. They lost Chris Lancaster with a career-ending neck injury. Hill leaving the Virginia Tech lineup. Thus, they had to press Henry Carter into emergency duty. He was a graduate assistant coach, but he has suited up at the fullback spot. And they've moved McFadden over there to spell Tracy Johnson, who has a sprained ankle. A quick toss to Henderson. He runs through one tackle, but he's drilled as he crosses the midfield stripe. Scott Rice again aggressively up to support the run. Number 38 on the tackle. This is something that Clemson should do all day. They've got the offensive line size and the back speed to just constantly wear down Virginia Tech. Danny Ford looked like he was trying to open it up a little bit in the first couple of series. He tried a couple of short passes. He threw the ball a little bit. He may have junked that already and said, look, let's just do what we do best. He's shuttling his wide receivers. Jennings is in there. They have two tight ends now, Fields and Coley. Third and two. They go McFadden up the middle, and he's very, very close into the pen where they spot it. It is going to be close, and if they don't get it, don't be surprised if Danny Ford doesn't go for it. I think he has that kind of... I don't think they got it. No, they he gave, doesn't have gave him a short spot. But like I said, don't be surprised if Danny Ford goes for it on fourth and one here. He's got that much confidence in his backs and his offensive line. They're going to measure, but if, if the chains were accurate on the sideline, they're not even... They're, they're, there they are, more than a length of the football away. So now Danny Ford has his first big decision. Does he want to pin Virginia Tech back in their own end zone, or does he want to take a chance and go for the first down? He's going to go for it. The punting team is staying off. Frank Beamer had an opportunity to coach and make a big decision early. He kicked a field goal and pulled the three off the board on a roughing the kicker penalty. On the subsequent attempt, they missed it. So his decision backfired. Let's see if this one will. Rodney Williams, right there. And he has the first down. He's thrown back, but his forward progress put him inside the 45 of Virginia Tech. Well, when in doubt, you give it to your best runner. They gave it to Rodney Williams behind Jeff Back, and it looks like they picked up the first down. I always like to plug those quarterbacks as great runners. Well, you know, I've always thought there's not much decision there when you got less than a yard. You got the guy who's closest to the yard line of scrimmage instead of giving it to somebody five yards deep. First first down, or second first down of the game for Clemson as they run Henderson, and he crashes through the right side. Bobby Martin was there, number 90, and White to make the tackle. Let's go down to the sidelines, and Chris. You mentioned that he had a couple of tight ends that were on the field. Those are the only healthy two tight ends. You see Jerome Williams behind me. He has an injury to his knee and should be back in time for the Florida State game, he tells me. And the other one is Chinadu Ohan, who happens to be hurt for this game, too, has a problem with an Achilles. So the two tight ends you saw are the only healthy ones right now, Kevin. Chris Danny Ford was telling me yesterday that's his major concern offensively, and it does affect their running game. A quick toss to Henderson. He's got some room. He's headed for Painter and a Clemson touchdown. it up and runs it all the way. They get two points. Sile on for the point after. And he's got it. 
seven to nothing. Clemson takes the early lead with 3.22 remaining in the first quarter. And here's another look at the option play that resulted in the touchdown. I mentioned earlier how it's key for Clemson's wide receivers to get blocks downfield. This is just a standard option. He gets outside. Number seven, Chip Davis, through the key block that sprung him on his 41-yard TD. Certainly no doubt about the speed of Henderson and Ben... Uh, Frank Beamer told us yesterday if he wanted to stop anything, it would be the option and the dive. That time they left the option wide open. Well, he said what he wanted to try to do was keep the ball in Rodney Williams' hands. Just because of a play like that, Henderson, McFadden, Johnson, all those guys have a lot of speed and a lot of power, and they can hurt you. Rodney Williams is averaging just over two yards a carry for his career. Obviously, they want to keep the ball in his hands. They couldn't quite do it right there. Well, if you're wondering about the depth of this Clemson team that comes in ranked fourth in the country, Henderson, who just sprinted 41 yards for the touchdown, is their third team tailback. John Kubu, the sophomore out of Anderson, South Carolina, will kick it off. Richardson and Jeffries have dropped deep. And it will be Richardson at the eighth. Stopped shy of the 25-yard line. LaVon Kirkland, number 44, was the first down there to get him. 14 yards on the return as you look at Joe Henderson. First down yardage is going to be a key from now on for Virginia Tech. They've gotten fewer in a third and long situation every time he had the ball. He needs to stay out of those as often as possible. Ralph Brown and Malcolm Blacken in the backfield now for Virginia Tech. And the quick toss comes to Brown. Not much running room on the left side. And they're starting to gang tackle now, Ben. One of the things to look for, and any good coach will tell you, when a team, when a team like Clemson pursues as hard as they do, they're susceptible to reverse. So look for that later on in the game. Right now, there's just nothing but orange surrounding every running back that Virginia Tech has when they get the ball. Vince Taylor, number 58, Raymond Chavis, number 79, and Vance Hammond, number 90, all met at the running back. Second down now at eight. They run the draw with Jeffries, and he's met as he crosses the 25. Brewster was there, and he got some help from Reggie Harris, number 24, the junior from Gaffney, South Carolina. Again, trying to run the counter tray. The two keys are to stop the lineman penetration and to get to the linebackers before they fill the hole. Virginia Tech is not doing that now. You see they're again in a third and long. <laughs> Jeff Roberts into the game, the wide receiver at the top of the screen. Fuhrer chased out of the pocket. There he's got the tight end all alone, and Harris got a hand on the ball. Brian McCall was wide open, but Reggie Harris made two big plays in that defensive set, and none bigger than that one. He just stopped a potential touchdown. As Fear comes back, he doesn't see anybody open, and yes, he does scramble well up into the pocket here. Looking around, he's going for the big play. He just missed about a 45-yard pass play right there. Good defensive play. Lot has dropped deep for Fitzgerald's punt. A high end over end kick that's short. Fair catch, fumbled. I've, a flag is down. Now the question's going to be, I think, whether or not he's signaling for the fair catch and he interfered with him and didn't give him enough room I to make the catch. I think that's what it's going to be. He, I think there's a, a two yard rule, and I believe he was right up on top of it. What a break that would have been for Virginia Tech if they could have come up with the ball and not had a penalty against him. Have a five yard interference on the kicking team. Five yards and a first down. Big that's, break. That's Big what break. it is. 26 yard punt. Let's see if he had room. Bobby Martin was right in his face. You could see him take his eye off the ball just as it came down to look at whoever was close to him. It's tough to catch those punts with nobody around you. It's even tougher when somebody's standing right on your foot. Ben, as we looked at it, I don't know if we can go back and get another look. It appeared, though, as though Lott may have signaled very late. Martin was already down there around him. You got to get that hand up a little bit sooner if you want to get room to make the catch. Judge McCall for the referees. 
very difficult, and I rarely tend to question the refs. From the Virginia Tech 49, first down for Clemson. Williams, that's who Frank Beamer wanted to carry it, but not like that. He's inside the 40 before he's run down. 22 yards, John Granby able to bring him down, and Tracy Johnson threw the block that sprung him. Now let's see. He still has his signal for the fair catch. There it goes. Well, Martin's momentum had taken him to that spot. And I wouldn't go so far as to say that was a fair catch signal. He may have just been swatting flies. From the 28 now, Virginia Tech, Williams with his first big play of the game. Off the tail of the tandem, it's Allen. No running room on that left side. Jock Jones and Jimmy Witten were there to say hello. You know, the big knock against Rodney Williams is that he doesn't have the tremendous rushing statistics. He doesn't have a tremendous passing statistics. But the biggest statistic in his mind and in Coach Ford's mind is wins and losses. With a win today, Rodney Williams will have won more, won more football games for Clemson than any other starting quarterback in the history of the school. That He's says tied. a lot for his ability. He's tied right now with Homer Jordan. Second down, about 10. No gain on that first play. Williams pushes back to Allen. He cuts outside. First down before he's run out of bounds. Roger Brown over there. Keith Jennings, the wide receiver, threw a great block to help him get outside. Two great blocks allowed Terry Allen to get outside on that. One by Stacy Long and one by the receiver, Keith Jennings. When you get your blockers on people and stay on the blocks, there's just nothing you can do but pick up yardage. Terry Allen, being as good as he is, leading the ACC in rushing last year, is going to pick up yards when the receivers block as well as they have been and when there's key blocks in the offensive line. Danny Ford was telling me yesterday that Jennings, number 87, is one of the finest blockers and wide receiver he's ever seen. They run Tracy Johnson, and the big fullback gets inside the 15. Well, you know, it's not surprising. Scott Hill is there to bring him down. It's uh, not surprising that these guys are great blockers. They're both over 6'3", 6'3", and 6'4", and these guys go better than 230 pounds. That's a good-sized wide receiver, and when you consider most DBs are in the 5'10", 185, 190-pound range. Pickup of about three. So it's going to be third down and seven. We'll see if they get this play off. The scoreboard has second down, but... Wait and see what the... Right up the middle of those Johnson, he goes nowhere on the final play of the first quarter. Horatio Moranto was the first to get him, but Al Shambly helped out, number 97. So the first quarter here in Death Valley is behind us. Clemson on the strength of Henderson's 41-yard touchdown run gives the Tigers the 7 to nothing lead. We'll be back with more college football in a moment. Kevin Slayton and Ben Bennett as you look at the beautiful campus of Clemson University and a sold out Frank Howard Field. Better than 78,000 plus are here along with us as we bring you our ACC opener along the Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions Network. Now this is the first quarter tail of the tape. The rushing yards, 41 of those coming on Henderson's touchdown burst. Virginia Tech opened up strong and the story, I guess, Ben, of that first quarter is they went down their first possession, kicked a field goal, and on a roughing the kicker penalty, they took the three points off the board, tried for the touchdown, didn't make it, and missed the subsequent field goal attempt. On third down, Allen off the delay, straight up the middle, inside the 10. Oh, He's still on his play. feet. Touchdown! Rusty Sile on for the conversion. 14 and nothing, the Tigers of Clemson. I don't know how Terry Allen came out of that phase of white shirts. Scott Rice and Al Shambley had a hold of him. But he burst 16 yards for the touchdown. He scored eight times last year, so the end zone's nothing new to him. You know, I don't care how good a coach you are, this is something you just can't coach. 
this is heart. He gets down, he knows he's close to the goal line. He takes a great shot and just stays on his feet. It looked like he never even was phased by that hit. And he got hit pretty hard. The balance you have to possess to do something like that is tremendous. And to have the presence of mind to never just miss a beat and just stay on his feet and get into the end zone, that's a, that's a credit to Terry Allen. Back-to-back -back possessions have resulted in Clemson touchdowns now as John Kubu, number six, gets set to kick off. First play of the second quarter is a productive one for the Tigers. Virginia Tech is going to have to get something going here. What they're allowing Clemson to do is hang on to the ball and dictate the pace of the game. Only two times in the last 10 years has anyone returned a kickoff for a touchdown against Clemson, and both times it was Virginia Tech. And one of those was last year by Jeffries, and he has the football at the 11. Straight up the middle he comes. He's up to the 30, still going strong the 32-yard line. Talking about that kickoff return for a touchdown, I saw that on film last year. I think just about anybody with, with speed better than about 4'8 could have run it back. He was so wide open, but he made a great run, got all the way to the end zone. It was the only touchdown that Virginia Tech scored last year against Clemson. One of the Virginia Tech players down, can't quite identify who it is. Well, Danny Ford told me yesterday that even I could have run it for a touchdown, oh, but he was untouched. Was, I, I doubted that, but... <laughs> It was, it, it was really one of the more wide open runs I've ever seen on a kickoff. Just underway in the second quarter, 14 to nothing. Clemson leads Virginia Tech. We'll be back in a moment after this from your local ACC station. We're moving for. Let's go down onto the field and our sideline reporter, Chris Allen. Thank you, Kevin. The stadium is not quite full today. It's uh, 78,000 estimated. Maybe a few more than that because I don't see too many holes in the stands. Now, for a game like Florida State or South Carolina, two games later in the year, they'll pack them into 82,500. There are some spots on the grass back there. You can't really see right now, but that section where the students sit on the hill turns into a sardine can. And there are a couple of other spots on the field just like it. All right, first down, Virginia Tech, and they run with Fox over the left side. He's upended as he gets close to the 40. James Lott came up out of the secondary, and he got plenty of help from Doug Brewster, the linebacker, number 92. Very, very important for Virginia Tech to get something going here because if they fall farther than 14 points behind, they're going to have to throw the football, and that's exactly what Clemson wants them to do because they'll start teeing off and coming after Fuhrer and put all shades of pressure on him. Other than the scramble by Fuhrer, that six-yard pickup was their longest rushing play of the day. Fuhrer rolling to his right, hits his man, Malcolm Blackett out of the backfield, and he gets roughed as he's going out of bounds. Gene Beasley, the strong safety, number 27, over there to drill it after a nine-yard pickup and a Virginia Tech first down. So, Ben, they did what you said they had to do. Well, off the counter option fake here, they just come out and hit the fullback in the flat. This is what they have to do. They have to pick up first down yardage every time they get, to get their hands on the ball because if they keep getting in the third and long situations, Fewer can only get, they can only pull an ace out of his hat so many times. He'll throw on first down. He's got the call at the 45 fumble. And we'll wait and see who got it. I believe Virginia Tech came up with that one. And I don't know how. He was short of the first down. There were orange jerseys all over the place. Jerome Henderson, number 36, was there to make the hit on McCall. Let's take another look. One thing you can count on, death taxes and that Clemson is going to hit you when you catch the football. I don't know who came up with the ball, but it was a big play to recover it for Virginia Tech. They picked up eight, second and two. They'll run with Jeffries. He gets outside this time. Brewster the first to hit it. And he gets help from Hatcher as he gets inside the 40. Another Virginia Tech first down. So their most consistent possession since the opening series of downs. And you've seen on both times that they picked up first down, they picked them up on second down and short. They didn't have to go to third and long and have a great play to pick up the first down. Ben is a quarterback, and I'll pick this point up after this play, but I want to talk about why Fuhrer has not gone to Richardson. And here goes Blacken right up the middle. He's short of the 32-yard line. I believe, he fumbled, I believe he fumbled the football. There, the ball coming loose again. But Virginia Tech able to corral it once more. 
The point I was going to make, Ben, is that Fuhrer, after he threw to Richardson, his veteran receiver earlier, and he dropped the ball, he hasn't gone his way again. Do you lose confidence in a receiver as a quarterback? I don't think he's lost confidence in his wide receivers. I think he's trying to establish the short game to open up his wide receivers for later on in the game. Pick up of six, second and four. They're getting the running game going. Back and again, first down and then some. He's inside the 25, down to the 22. Before Richard slipped number 28, the free safety brought him down. And I'll tell you what, they're getting a big burst from Malcolm Black and the senior out of Beaver Lake, Virginia. This is exactly what Virginia Tech has to do to get back in the game. They're throwing good blocks, they're staying on the blocks, and the backs are running hard. Again, I, I hate to keep beating it like a dead horse, but they've stayed out of the third long situation and they've just kept moving down the field. Pickup of 10 and another Virginia Tech first down at the 23 at Clemson. Here comes Jeffries to the right side and he's tripped up as he gets near the 20. Donnell Wolford coming up there and fighting off the block of Cullen to make the tackle. But he still picked up four. Clemson plays a lot of cover two, which is where the corners come up and play bump on the outside wide receiver. That does two things. One, it throws off the passing routes, throws off the timing, and two, it gives them force on the sweeps a lot quicker. Fox in there, number 43, the fullback. He pays Blackie to give him a breather. Down the middle, hits the call again. Short of the first down. Brewster, number 92, and James Lott, number five, were in there to make the tackle. You look at Danny Ford in his baseball cap. He has 158 baseball caps. One of, the, one of the things Coach Beamer wanted to try to do was to put his formation into the boundary and work back to the wide side of the field. He's got a wide receiver going deep and a tight end coming underneath. As he keeps picking his receivers underneath, you'll see how close the Clemson defenders are. Those are the linebackers. If they're that close on the tight ends and the backs, later on in the game, his wide receivers are going to be wide open behind them. They're short of the first down. And I mentioned those baseball caps. He also has a Duke hat bin. And, and rightly so. He doesn't have a Super Bowl ring, but 13 of his former players do. And combined, those 13 players have 18 Super Bowl rings. A hallmark of the Clemson great football tradition. Short yardage. Fox on second effort has the first down. If they Johnson hit him first, number 12, but Fox able to reach back for something extra and apparently pick up the first down. If they give him a good spot, he should have it. Watch the second effort here. This is this is what gets him the first down if they pick up the yardage. He gets stuffed and stretches back out across and picks up first down yardage. As you go through a course of a game, you'll look back and say, there are five or six big plays that had they gone the other way, could have turned the tide. Let's hope we look back, and that was a big play. First down at the 13. They've been deeper. They had first and goal at the nine earlier. Here's Fox. He runs into a Hornets nest, led by Brewster, number 92, and McCullough, number 96. They're driving down to the section of the stadium where the Virginia Tech fans have been able to weave their way and get a few thousand seats down there, so they're in friendly territory. And as we were talking about the big plays, sometimes the little plays end up being the big plays, and I'll tell you why after this play right here. Urich keeps it himself, and he's down to the five. Gene Beasley tripped him up, number 27, and he had some help from Vince Taylor, number 58, the linebacker. So it'll be third and about two. On the Clemson drive when McFadden went 41 yards for a touchdown, you remember one of the big plays was a little fourth and one. That turned out to be a big play because Clemson came back and scored. If Virginia Tech scores on this possession, the third and one that they picked up the first down on will again be a little play that turned out to be a big play. And so will this one. Third down. Fox, first down, touchdown! Tremendous second effort. Tremendous second effort. Well, we 
were talking earlier about gutsy runs, you're not going to see a lot more effort out of a running back than you get out of Rich Fox right here. He got hit by two Clemson defenders right on the goal line and still drove into the end zone for a big Virginia Tech score. Kinzer for a school record, 57 straight conversions. And Virginia Tech is back in this ball game. Cutting the lead to 14 to 7. Ben, you mentioned at the start of that drive they had to get something established, and they did. As they drove down the field and scored on this run by Fox. This has done two things for Virginia Tech. One, it's given them a lot of emotion. They feel like they're back in the game. They feel like they're on top of things. And two, it's given them a seven-point deficit rather than 14. 9:33 left in the half. A seven-point Tiger lead. Live at Frank Howard Field in Clemson, South Carolina for the Rally in the Valley. Great football game shaping up in our ACC football opener. Clemson leading Virginia Tech 14 to seven. Better than 78,000 are here. I'm here, Kevin Slayton, along with Ben Bennett, the former Duke All-American quarterback. And Ben, a very important drive that time for Virginia Tech. Tremendously important. What I was saying right before the break, not only did it cut the deficit from a two touchdown to a one touchdown uh, behind for Virginia Tech, it also pumped a lot of emotion into both their offense and their defense. Clemson can squelch that. If they come back and make a big play here, it may take a lot of the juice out of uh, Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech, on the other hand, can give themselves a bigger pump if they come back and stop Clemson in three plays here. McFadden and Henderson are deep for the Tigers, awaiting the kickoff from Kinzer. Good time for an onside kick. That'll take away the big play. Henderson in his own three. He comes up the sideline and breaks through. Kinzer is there to knock him down. And if it weren't for Kinzer, it would have been a Clemson touchdown. Henderson has provided the spark today for the Tigers. Like I said, one of the ways to take a lot of steam out of somebody's sails is to return a kickoff right after a touchdown as big as they did. This is a great run. He picks his hole and gets up. Kinzer makes a good stop here. If he hadn't made the tackle, Virginia Tech would have been uh, lining up to try and block an extra point. 51 yards on the return by oh, Henderson. Okay. McFadden in there at fullback, number 22. Allen the tailback, number 21. Usually you don't get that long return from the sideline. There's Allen over the right side, and he gets down to about the 42-yard line. Shambly, number 97, was in on the stop, and he got some help out of the secondary from Don Stokes, number 32. Herdman has not returned to the Virginia Tech lineup. We saw him go off a little while ago. We'll try to get a report from the Hokie sideline to see if he is all right. Pick up a four, second and six. A quick pass to Jennings. He has it, and he has a first down before Granby can wrestle him down. That's a big target over there, Ben. That is a load for a wide receiver. This guy is as big as most teams' tight ends. It's 6'4", 235. When he gets out there one-on-one -on -one and Rodney Williams can hit him, all he's got to do is get his hand out to push somebody away, and he's in the end zone. 31 catches a year ago for the senior from Somerville. He caught seven in that Citrus Bowl win over Penn State. The Tigers for the first down. Williams kept it himself after taking the handoff to McFadden. Now to contrast the last two plays, let me tell you a little bit about what Virginia Tech is trying to do. Clemson ran the ball well in their two touchdown drives. So in essence, they've gone into a man-to-man -man coverage and put eight people up on the line. They're trying to say to Clemson, hey, we're going to try and take away your run. If you can do it, you got to throw the ball against us. As big as that offensive series was for Virginia Tech a few minutes ago, so is this defensive series for the Hokies. Second and nine, Williams tucks it up, puts it back. There goes Allen again. Great block in the corner. He's inside the 15. Stokes brought him down, but a great block from Chip Davis, number seven. 
I tell you what, you can't ask for more than this out of your wide receivers. They want to be glory boys and catch the ball all the time, but when they're asked to block, they've come through and done a great job. Chip Davis lays a great block out here, and again, springs Terry Allen for a big game. 18 yards that time for Terry Allen, who's having himself a big day. 49 yards on six carries so far. And of course, he had the touchdown run of 15 yards. Henderson and Johnson in the Clemson backfield now. And it's Henderson straight up the middle inside the 10. Or Johnson, excuse me. When it was Stokes who made the tackle, but they're close to another first down. When Clemson gets down inside the five-yard line, Tracy Johnson is their money man. He scored 15 touchdowns last year, or in his career, and he's got uh, three TDs versus Penn State last year. When they get in close, they're going to give the ball to him. Double tight end, second down. A whistle sounds before the play. A timeout was called by Virginia Tech, so they stopped the play. They were able to get the officials' attention in time. They would have regretted that had Clemson coughed it up. Yeah, this is true. I have to go back and say, Tracy Johnson has 15 touchdowns in his career. He had nine last year. When they get inside, when they get inside the 10, they're going to try and throw the ball. They're going to try and pitch the ball back to their tailbacks and let them work it in. 6.41 left in the half, a seven-point Clemson lead. We'll return to Death Valley for more in a moment. Kevin Slayton along with Ben Bennett along the Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions Network. Glad you could join us for our ACC opener. Clemson leading Virginia Tech 14-7. 6.41 left in the first half, but the Tigers are driving for more in front of 78,000-plus here in Death Valley. A Clemson touchdown here will put this crowd back into a frenzy and back on the side of Clemson. Second and two. Ball spotted about the seven. Johnson again over the left side. He's inside the five, has the first down. Archie Hopkins, number 37, made the tackle for Virginia Tech. Johnson playing on a very painful sprained ankle. You know, there's some, some innate ability of, of football players to shake off pain and come back and play to their utmost. Tracy Johnson is showing you here, Nuna Mocker, the whole crew, a lot of them are beat up and banged up. They don't care, they wanna get out there and they wanna win some football games. And it's gut check time for the Virginia Tech defense. First and goal, Clemson at the four. Williams keeps it himself, touchdown! Six oh seven left in the first half. Kevin Slayton alongside Ben Bennett. Twenty one seven. The Tigers lead, and Williams got the last score. Well, only Rodney Williams will know for sure. But normally, on a fake handoff, there's a closer mesh between the quarterback and the tailback. Rodney Williams, being a senior and being a tremendous athlete, if it wasn't a designed play, he made a superior play to get into the end zone. Frank Beamer told us yesterday, as you checked the scoring drive out, that he wanted Rodney Williams to carry the ball for Clemson. He didn't want it in the tailback's hands or the fullback's hands, but all Williams has done is rush four times for 27 yards, a touchdown included in there, a 21-yard run. So he has hurt Virginia Tech himself carrying the ball. Kubu will kick it off for Clemson. Jeffries and Richardson drop deep for Virginia Tech. 
Jeffries was about one player away from breaking the last one. First time he returned a kickoff last year, he returned it for a touchdown. That was against Clemson. Very short kick taken by one of the up men. And he gets it back to the 35-yard line. Tim Boytnot, number 31, said, wait a minute, I'm supposed to block. Virginia Tech will take over from their own 35-yard line. Let's take you back and recap what's happened. A 41-yard touchdown run by Joe Henderson got Clemson on the board. And then on the first play of the second quarter, Terry Allen went 15 yards with a great effort to give them a 14-point lead. Now on first down, Will Fuhrer rolls out, tries to loft it, intended for McCall. And Carl Borden also in the vicinity, but I think Fuhrer just wanted to get rid of that one. Well, what happened was this is the same play that Fox was open to on the goal line for and that they've run a couple times successfully and gotten the ball to the fullback. The fullback got tied up in the offensive tackle and the defensive end's block and couldn't get out. Fewer wisely got rid of the ball and avoided the loss. To finish that scoring summary, Fox got the touchdown for Virginia Tech to get them back in the game, and then you saw Williams score a moment ago. Thus, we're at 21-7. Second and 10. Fewer in trouble, and down he goes. Dorian Mariable was there, and he did a good job of standing his ground and not let Fuhrer escape. One of the things you can't do, and Will Fewer does here, when you come all the way across with pursuit coming back, you can't try to turn and outrun somebody back into the face of pursuit. He got caught there, lost yardage, and again, they're in a third and long. Ralph Brown, number three, and Malcolm Black and number 11 are the setbacks. Richardson and Roberts are the wide receivers. On third down, Fuhrer checks his backside. Now Hatcher has him from behind. Hatcher, who had seven sacks a year ago, the leading returning sacker in the ACC, gets his first of the year, and that brings him to their feet. Hatcher is a former junior college All-American here, and you can see Will Fuhrer check him out out of the corner of his eye as he was coming back. He was just too quick and got all over Will before he could do anything. Wolfer to return the punt for Clemson from his own 29. Cuts it back upfield and gets to about the 37-yard line before Jack Jones, number 40, is down there to greet him. Let's go down out of the sidelines and Chris Allen, who has the injured Chris Lancaster along with it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Chris Lancaster is basically or has been a co-starter with Tracy Johnson at fullback for the last three years. First of all, your situation, your condition being out for the season. Well, you know, my condition is I'm not able to play this year with a neck injury. Uh, right now I'm doing all I can to help the team and motivate the team and try to learn all I can about coaching. And hopefully one day I can give to others what I've been given. What about what's going on with Tracy and on down the line at fullback spot now that you've been pulled out of there and McFadden going into the spot? Well, you know, Tracy continues to do a fine job. He's an excellent player, great human being. And Wesley McFadden, he's um, he's filled the shoes. He's taken up the slack. And then again, we got Henry Carter over there for short yardage and for uh, described blocking back. Good luck to you, and thanks a lot for Thank joining you. us, Chris. Kevin, Ben. Thank you, Chris. You saw the play. Terry Allen catching the little flare out for about a two yard gain. Lancaster hitting a tackling dummy in practice. And they took x rays and they found a nick on, on the vertebrae, and uh, they didn't want to risk any further neck damage. And thus, his football career comes to an abbreviated end. Here comes Henderson through the left side, and he gets near midfield to about the 48 yard line before Scott Rice, the junior out of Grafton, Virginia made the tackle. That's three or four times we've seen Rice come out of the secondary after Frank Beamer had told us that he wanted Rice to be more aggressive against the run. That's not something you really want to rely on on your defense. You don't want your defensive backs having to make the tackles. They're usually smaller and they're normally not as powerful tacklers as your linebackers and your linemen. Also, it means if they're getting into the secondary that they're picking up substantial yards. And enough yardage for another Clemson first down. He got nine that time, and Henderson thus far has 58 yards. 344 left in the first half. If you joined us late, you missed the 200th run down the hill of the Clemson football team as they rub the Magic Rock, Frank Howard, a 
charge down the hill. First down play, a running play to McFadden. He may have fumbled the ball. But if he did, he fell right on it. You saw Rodney Williams heading into the pile to try to help out. Interesting, Ben. Difficult adjustment, I would suspect, for Wesley McFadden. He's a tailback, and he's been asked to play fullback, and he sacrificed perhaps personal laurels for the team effort. It's quite a switch to move from uh, up on a, a two-point stance and eight yards deep to down in a three-point stance and four yards deep. You don't get the vision of the holes opening up like you do from deep. We got two that time. Williams hits Jennings, who's alone inside the 40, and he's quickly brought down. But he has another first down. One of the things that Clemson is starting to do well is because they're running the ball so well, that's making their play action passes wide open. As they do this, you're gonna see them hit more than just a 12 yard curl pattern. You're gonna see them go up top, possibly for a big play. That play has been open all afternoon. They really are giving Jennings a lot of room. Two and a half minutes remaining in the half. Williams has Cooper wide open down the middle, but he got it there too late, and then it's a good thing that he underthrew it. Cooper was or was wide open coming across the middle. Rodney Williams, unfortunately, didn't see Cooper as quickly as he would like to have. Cooper came open initially about 18 yards down the field. Williams had to pull the ball down and wait and throw, and by that time there was too much congestion. And wisely, Rodney Williams, I think at the end of the play, saw that there was people there and instead just threw it into the ground. Robbie Spector, number two, in one of the wide receiver spots, as is Ricardo Hooper, number 26. On third down, or second down and 10. Williams with the quick toss back to Allen. He has a first down and more. And it's only because Tracy Johnson was on the ground trying to block that Allen was prevented from having perhaps another touchdown. A Clemson player is down on the field, and it appears to be Pat Williams, the senior right guard out of Lincoln Town, Georgia. And that's who it is, Pat Williams. Terry Allen doing his impression of the Fosbury flop. He got up high, didn't he? Tracy Johnson, if he just stayed down, would have been in a lot better shape. You see him try to get back up to help Terry, and unfortunately, Terry Allen just couldn't leap quite high enough to get over Tracy's helmet. Clemson's offensive line, and again, their wide receivers are shelling people and opening up huge holes for Terry Allen. <laughs> unfortunately, the only thing that's stopping Clemson right now is Clemson. Well, they're still tending to Pat Williams. Allen thus far has rushed for 69 yards on just seven carries, and he has a touchdown run. Bringing a stretcher out, and that is not a good sign. Williams was a doubtful starter before the game. Looks more like a lounge chair with wheels. It's tough to get a 6'4", 285-pounder up on that thing. Ben, we were talking before the game about ACC football coming of age and how it certainly has. All eight of the schools had their best recruiting years in their own territories. And so that is uh, voting well for the future. And uh, the image, of course, of the conference has always been one of basketball, but Clemson has been able to change that through the 10 year stint of Danny Ford, and it's becoming more and more respected around the country as a football conference as well. Well, people are excited about the young coaches that we have here in the ACC. Danny Ford has got a tremendous program, and with the young coaches the other seven schools possess and the good recruiting classes, their time will come in the next couple of years. The thing that they were very happy about is that they did recruit well in their own home states. With two and a half minutes left in the half, a reminder, stay with us at halftime. We'll take a trip around the league, tell you who the student athlete of the week is, talk about the Tigers' championship season a year ago, and we'll catch you up to date on all of the scores around the world of college football. First down at the 15 for Clemson as they threaten to score again. Williams for Jennings in the corner. Had a good job of defensive work from John Granby. I was talking to Danny Ford yesterday at practice, and he said, Probably the one play we haven't put in is a lob pass to Jennings, as tall as he is, but they were trying to do it that time. They were a little far out for a lob. As you can see, it's a long, long throw for Rodney Williams, even though it doesn't travel very far downfield. The timing was just a little bit off. They may come back to that later on in the game. Granby had excellent position defensively. Very good, very good position. And it forces the Tigers into a second and 10. 
Two touchdown Clemson lead as they threaten to add on to it. Tracy Johnson headed for touchdown. He's got it. plus and Chris Gardaki the freshman kicker out of Stone Mountain Georgia a left-footed sidewinder comes on to try his first kick as a college football player Andy Ford experimenting in that kicking area and he is perfect so he gets some quick experience Clemson tacks on another conversion and their lead has swelled to 28 to 7 with a three touchdown outburst here in the second quarter when they get down close, Tracy Johnson's going to get the football. You can see he just has a tremendous nose for the end zone, as do all of the Clemson backs. And he carried a good tackler, Don Stokes, all the way into the end zone. When these guys get close, they're going to find a way to, to fight and scratch and claw, but they're going to get themselves into the end zone. And that's a trademark of all the Clemson backs, not just this year, in years past. Well, people around the country have talked about Clemson. And they've talked about their depth and the great skill position players they have. They've scored four touchdowns today, and four different players have scored them, including a third-team tailback by the name of Joe Henderson. And mark it down, because you'll hear a lot from him before this year's out. Kubu will kick it off, as he has done all day, to Jeffries or Richardson, dropping deep for Virginia Tech. There is Jeffries. Richardson is at the top of the screen beat. Kubu gets it high. It'll be Jeffries at the 10. Jeffries short of the 30 before he is dropped. Reggie Harris along with Tyron Muzan. Got down there to make the tackle. Muzan number 47. Harris number 24. Again, like earlier in the game, this is a crucial drive for Virginia Tech. Last series, they went three plays and out. Clemson went down and scored. If they can get down here before the end of the half, score a touchdown, it's going to give them a tremendous boost going in at halftime. Black and Jeffries are the setbacks. Cullen and Richardson, the wide receivers. Cullen hasn't had a ball thrown his way all day. They'll run the screen to Jeffries. Oh, a great defensive play by Richard Smith. The senior from Sparta, Georgia, fought off the block and made the tackle. This is just a tremendous, tremendous defensive play. Trying to slow down the rush. Again, they're going to the screen. It looks good, but he just makes a tremendous tackle. Out of the two-minute offense, a loose football as Barefoot dropped it after he caught it. He was really stuck by Mariable, and they'll call it a completion and the play down, I would assume. Now they're stopping the clock, and Clemson has asked for a timeout. The hurry-up offense of Virginia Tech with a minute and a half remaining. One of the things Virginia Tech absolutely does not want to do right now is turn the ball over deep in their own territory and give Clemson a chance to go up 35 to 7 or, or 31 to 7, whichever the case may be. Right now, they're three touchdowns behind. If they can get down, get a field goal, or get a touchdown, they can bring it back to where they're within a reasonable striking distance. One thing about Clemson secondary, when you catch the ball, you're going to get hit twice now. We've seen McCall once, and this time barefoot, the tight ends, catch one over the middle only to get drilled and then cough it up. So far, they've been fortunate and recovered both of them. Clemson's defense lives to hit people. I mean, that's what their coach to do. That's what they want to do. And every shot that they get, they're going to do it. You know, interestingly, for an opener, Ben, very cleanly played. Not many penalties after the first series of downs and no turnovers as yet. That's a tremendous credit to both coaches, both Coach Beamer and Coach Ford, in addition to the players. Third down and six for Virginia Tech. They'll run the draw with Black, and he nearly fell down. He has the first down as he crosses the 40. Everybody thought pass, and Richard Smith and Ed McDaniel, number 93, had to combine on the stop. Good call by Beamer. 
Clemson hurrying up, trying to at least get within field goal range. Fuhrer for Richardson. He appeared to give up on the ball, Ben. Richardson. Myron Richardson saw a ball going in the middle of four orange jerseys, and I don't think he was real excited about going in there and picking it out. He has been shut out today, as has Cullen. Number 48, the other wide receiver. He's a tremendous player and does a lot for their team. They have to get him more involved in the game. Second and 10. Fuhrer with time. Now he hits Richardson across midfield. And that is another first down for Virginia Tech. Wolford quickly up on the coverage. Flag is down in the Virginia Tech backfield. And you wonder if it's not a hole. Well, that's what it'll be. That hurts. Well, Frank Beamer told us yesterday he was worried about this type of a scenario. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, second down. The well, one thing he was worried about, Ben, was his young quarterback, Will Fuhrer, coming unglued in front of the sellout crowd, but that really hasn't happened. The crowd really hasn't played a major part in the game yet. To show you how big that penalty was, instead of first and 10 at the 47, it's now second and 20 from the 30. Run the draw to Jeffries, but he's going nowhere. Mervyn Green, the sophomore out of Utahville, South Carolina, made the tackle, and he had some help from Richard McCullough. There is Mervyn Green. He just came into the game. This Clemson Tiger team goes two and three players deep at every spot. A reminder, the announcers of this game are approved and selected by Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, unauthorized duplication, or reception of this broadcast without the express written permission of Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is prohibited. I'll bet you knew that. So what does that mean? They can't tape the game and go back and look at us again? I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to get involved in that. 58 seconds left in the first half as Fuhrer goes over and talks it over. Cam Young, you see, number eight. Had a battle with Fuhrer for the quarterback spot. Both are left-handed quarterbacks, by the way. A rarity. And Fuhrer, Frank Beamer told us yesterday, decisively beat Cam Young over the last couple of weeks of uh, preseason practice. He's not here on a lark. He earned his position. I think what you're going to see Beamer do here, rather than take a chance and try and pick up a third and 19, I think he's going to see him run the ball, try and read up some clock, and then just get rid of the ball, give it up, and hope Clemson doesn't get a chance to score. When they throw the most dangerous pass, and there's the loose ball, and Clemson has it. Wolford was over there to make the hit and pause the fumble. Jeffries puffed it up, and Mariable recovered it. The one thing I said that they really didn't want to do, they came back and did. This is close as to whether this is a catch and a fumble or an incomplete pass. But they come up with it as Clemson's ball. If they score here, this could be putting a huge final nail in the coffin. 51 seconds in which to score. And they'll operate from the Virginia Tech 32. Well, it was a dangerous pass to begin with. If they were going to throw, you'd expect something safe. The sideliner can be picked off quickly for six. On first down, Williams. Out of the backfield is Allen, and he can't quite catch up with it, and he was covered very closely by Sean Lucas. They wanted all of it on that play. This is a good call. What they're trying to do is make flow to the wide side of the field and then sneak a back out and get him isolated on a linebacker. They didn't get the matchup they wanted. They didn't get the big play. Clemson had had the better of the field position. One time in Virginia Tech territory when they started their drive, and of course all four of those possessions culminated in touchdown. This time they take over to 32. They run the draw with Allen. Gets past the first wave of tacklers. Gets past the second, and he's knocked out of bounds on the far side by Scott Rice, who did it with authority. I thought I might see a flag bend come down. It appeared Clemson got away with the clip. 37 seconds remaining, and a first down. Jeff back through a key block. You know, a lot of teams, when they're trying to go 35-some yards in 50 seconds, they're going to throw the ball. Clemson's forte is running the football. Terry Allen here does a great job to get away from the tacklers, gets up the field, and gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Pickup of 13 and a first down. You saw in the picture that block I was talking about thrown by Jeff Back, but the defender did turn to him. 
Williams going to keep it. Nowhere to go on that one. Clemson will have to call a quick timeout. Archie Hopkins was there to make the tackle. Clemson stops the clock with 31 ticks remaining in the half. That's what Beamer wanted the Virginia Tech defense to do all game. They wanted to be able to take away the pitch, take away the fullback, and keep the ball in Rodney Williams' hands. That time, they did what they wanted to do. A three-touchdown outburst by Clemson in the second quarter. That's given them their three-touchdown lead with 31 seconds left in the half as they try to add more. They came into this game ranked fourth in the country. But Danny Ford is not the type of coach who, if he does get a big lead, he will not pour it on. But he has enough depth to never be accused of that. His third team players would start most anywhere else in the country. Witness Joe Henderson, who burst 41 yards for the game's first score. Williams isn't quite sure what Danny Ford wants him to do, and he better make sure he does. A young team, Virginia Tech, coming in here with Frank Beamer in his second year as coach, Ben. When you get down three touchdowns at halftime, it's tough to get your troops fired up. Well, they know what they have to do. They're playing a very good Clemson team, and if they want to win, they know they're going to have to come out and execute better than they have in this first half. On second down, Jock Johnson knocks the pass down. Williams was looking for Gary Cooper on a quick slant. A lot of times the knock against the quarterback is that he's not tall enough to see over and then throw over the offensive lineman, or the defensive lineman, rather. This is not a case of not being tall enough. This is a case of somebody just being in the way and jumping up and getting their hands on the ball. You know, a great play right here would be the halfback option pass. I don't know if they have it in or if they have the guts to run it down here, but it would be a great call. Third and 12, here comes the blitz. Williams for Jennings, but he overthrew. He had to throw it a little sooner than he wanted to, and that messed up his timing. Jock Johnson was blitzing from his linebacker spot. So that'll force a field goal situation, and that will give Chris Gardaki, the freshman, a chance to make some good points with his head coach, Danny Ford. You see Morocco, the holder, Gardaki getting set, and they'll spot it at about the 28, which will make it a 38-yard kick, his first collegiate field goal attempt. Trying to solve the vacancy left by Treadwell. He has it up. Down it. And he drills it through. So perhaps the Clemson kicking problem is solved by that young man. They tack three more on after the turnover. And with 16 seconds left in the half, the lead has swelled to 31 to 7. This is a tough situation for Virginia Tech to put Will Fuhrer in. He's down 24 points, and when they come back out in the second half, you can count on two things. Clemson is going to be coming after him, and they're going to be laying back with everybody else. It's a tough situation to be in for anybody, much less a freshman quarterback. Clemson showing why most preseason polls have them ranked in the top five in the country. And defensively, they haven't missed a beat. Ranked second in the country a year ago in overall defense. And with nine starters returning, you pretty much expected the same. They lost Tony Stevens, and they lost Michael Dean Perry to graduation. But they just uh, knit one Pearl two and plug in two more defensive linemen. Illinois with the much-awaited debut of Jeff George at quarterback, the former Purdue quarterback, trailing Washington State, as you saw, 16-7. John Kubu kicking off. Another short kick. And once again, it's Boytnot, and he gets across the 30 to the 32. Let's go down to the sidelines and Chris Allen. I had a tough job. I had to come over here and find the feature twirler so we could talk about what's coming up at halftime. First of all, your name. I'm Shannon Fogel. Tell us what we're not going to see on TV at halftime, but what everybody around here gets to see. Quite a show, I understand. Yeah, we're all going to be twirling some novelty batons. We're doing, I'm doing one, two, three, and four batons, and we're doing some knives and um, hoops. <laughs> well, this looks like party time out here, and of course, it's packed with 78,000 plus. I know they'll enjoy it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Fuhrer going for an all for Richardson, and it's intercepted and dropped. 
Richard Smith was back there, number 28. He had the best shot at it. That's a, that's a gimme interception. I know it. he'd like to have a chance to get his hands on again. Fuhrer shaken up after that, after he delivered that throw. Very slow in getting up. And I don't think he's going to continue. Cam Young is going to come out there for him. You hate to second guess a coach with 16 seconds left and down 24 points. Is it really in your quarterback's best interest to get him back there and have him lay up what possibly could be an easy interception for Clemson right at the end of the half? Conversely, if there's a pass interference penalty, they get a chance at a field goal. He looks like a genius. Cam Young, you would expect to just kill the clock. But he's not going to. But John Johnson will as he gets the sack. So it ends on a good note for the Tigers of Clemson as they head to the locker room with a 24-point lead. Again, you would think with two seconds left, you would just cut your losses and not put your quarterback in any more danger. Well, this game started in favor of Virginia Tech when they took the opening drive and went down there, kicked a the field goal, led 3-0, a penalty on the kick. They decided to take the penalty and then subsequently missed the field goal. That gave Clemson the momentum, and they scored near the end of the first, half, uh, first quarter on the touchdown burst by Henderson, and it's been pretty much all Clemson since as they've raced to four touchdowns from four different players and route to a 31-7 halftime lead. Let's go back down to the sidelines now and Chris Allen. You saw Chris Gardaki kick the field goal. He ended up with four points. He's the only true freshman on the Clemson team to have played thus far. And as far as Gardaki goes, you know, he's got to get some training from somewhere. Well, I happen to run into David Treadwell, the All-American kicker from last year's Clemson team. He's here in attendance today watching the game. And I asked David Treadwell what he's doing since he's been cut from the Denver Broncos. Well, he's staying in shape and training right here on the Clemson campus, trying to hook up with another professional team. And that means Chris Gardaki is getting some training from one of the best of all time, and that is David Treadwell. What better way to get used to a crowd of 78,000 plus for Gardaki, a freshman, than from guy like David Treadwell, who's definitely done it over time. All right, 31-7, Clemson at the half. We'll be back with the halftime festivities from Death Valley after this from your local ACC station. ...is brought to you by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. For insurance and financial services, better call JP. By Schlitz Malt Liquor, no one does it like the bull. And by Buick and your Buick dealers. The Great American Road belongs to Buick. Thirty-one to seven, Clemson leads Virginia Tech here at the half. Now let's take a look at our Toyota halftime stats. And Ben, the tail of the tape there is the rushing yardage, two hundred and thirteen to fifty-one. No more need said. The, the key to the whole thing has been that the wide receivers have sprung the backs once they've gotten through the line. That's why they've run up so much yardage. And thus, that's the way it's gone. A big rushing first half for Clemson. It all got started late in the first quarter when third-team tailback Joe Henderson ripped off a 41-yard touchdown sprint off the option. I hope you can see the tail end of the block here. Well, I guess you can't. Chip Davis threw a great block on the corner that allowed McFadden to turn the corner and get into the end zone. When you talk about effort from a running back, you look at Terry Allen. On the first play of the second quarter, this 15-yard run, he earned every yard of it. Again, this is uncoachable. This is just heart and desire. He wanted to get into the end zone, and nothing was going to stop him. Great play. Virginia Tech was able to answer that one with their best drive of the day. They went down there, and Fox scored on this short burst to cut the lead to 14-7. to But then Clemson had a big play off the kickoff return, a 51-yard return. And it was all Clemson the rest of the second quarter. They exploded for 24 points in that second quarter. There is the rock. You see it at the top of that green stand. That is the Frank Howard uh, magical, mystical rock that all of the Clemson players rub before charging down the hill as they traditionally have done here at Clemson since 1942. They did it today for the 200th time. And Ben, we were here early enough to watch the folks stand up and sing happy birthday to the hill. And I thought I heard you singing. <laughs> that was me doing my Pavarotti imitation. You need some work on it. Kubu will kick off. Virginia Tech won the toss in the beginning of the game and elected to take the second half kickoff. That is 
quite possibly the best thing they have done thus far because they do not have to turn the ball back over to that Clemson offense, which was really cooking on all cylinders at the end of the first half. Well, Virginia Tech's offense has got to come out and score some points right now. If they don't, it's going to be a long afternoon for them. I'm willing to guess that they may stay with Cam Young. Fewer got pretty beat up in the first half. They may want to stay with Cam Young and see what he can do. Richardson and Jeffries are deep as the ball has fallen off the tee two times in a row. So we will await the kickoff. Fuhrer is all the way down at the end of his team's pitch. And he's nowhere near beat. And this is Jeffries at the four. He crosses the 20 and is snowed under. First to hit him was Arlington Nunn, number 39. I believe you're going to have a blocking below the waist penalty here. Flag is down, and there's Fuhrer. He would certainly want to come back in. A freshman making his college debut, and the penalty is against Virginia Tech. It looks as though Fuhrer is going to be the man, though. Have a clip. Against Virginia Tech on the return. Half the distance of the goal. First down. Well, so much for my guess, huh? Well, that's exactly how they did not want to start the second half. So Fuhrer will have to dig his team out of a hole. They'll operate from their own 12-yard line. Not a very good the first half. Not a spectacular set of numbers, but the thing that he did was he avoided the big play, giving it up to Clemson. Well, they'll run Jeffries on first down. He gets it up to about the 15 before he's met by Richard McCullough, number 96. On Virginia Tech's only touchdown drive, the thing that they did well was they picked up five, four, five, six yards on first down and kept themselves out of second and third and long. And the workhorse was the fullback, Rich Fox and Malcolm Blacken on that drive. So let's see if they go back to the fullback. There goes Fox, straight up the gut. He crosses the 20, gets to the 22-yard line. Drag was the first to get him. And McCullough again, number 96, helping out. Nick Cullen and James Lott are going at it in the secondary. They're throwing leather down there. Big third down play, third and one. Virginia Tech would very much want to keep this first drive alive here in the second half. They'll go with two tight ends, and I'll bet you you'll see Fox. And he has the first down. McCullough getting the workload here in the start of the second half. He was on the tackle again. That's another one of those little plays that could turn out to be a big play in the course of this game. Had they not picked up the first down, it would have been three plays and out. Clemson would have had the ball in great field position. Now Virginia Tech has got another first down. They've got a little breathing room. They've got a chance to make something happen. Wake Forest has jumped out on top of Villanova. 10 to nothing, as you see there, in the first quarter. First down for Virginia Tech. Fuhrer will throw it on first down. Down the middle, that could be picked off, and it is by Beasley. He may take it. Now he cuts back to the inside and is dropped at the 24-yard line. Ben, you hate the second guess, but the words were almost out of my mouth as he dropped back. Why throw when you're running the ball well? Well, they're trying to mix things up. Unfortunately, they mixed up their own players. I'm not sure who uh, Will Fuhrer is trying to throw to here. He had two people crossing in front of him. The ball just bounced off of Myron Richardson's hands and into Beasley's arms. Now, had Beasley stayed to the outside, he might have taken it down close to the goal line there. So Clemson gets the second turnover in a row against Virginia Tech, and we'll be back with more college football from Death Valley in a moment. The rally in the valley, Clemson, South Carolina. Kevin Slayton along with Ben Bennett. Clemson leading 31 to seven in a sea of orange is better than 78,000 look on here at Frank Howard Field. After the Beasley interception, the Tigers take over the Virginia Tech 24. McFadden in the fullback, Allen is the tailback. They'll go with Terry Allen, he's met and dropped. But he still is able to pick up a couple of yards. Hill was the man that got him, number 66. Clemson's probably not going to get too tricky here. They're going to run the basic plays that they've run, keep trying to wear Virginia Tech down and put the ball in the end zone. If they score another touchdown here, it's, it's going to be a long afternoon for Virginia Tech trying to come back. Scott Hill, who made that tackle, the leading tackler on the Virginia Tech team, had 23 tackles last year against unbeaten Syracuse. Here's McFadden trying the right side, but he runs in the hill again. 
very short yardage again. So when they go Hill's way, it's very difficult to break anything open. Hill was an honorable mention All-American a year ago. The third and seven for Clemson, just outside of the Virginia Tech 21. Look for Rodney Williams to roll this way, give himself the opportunity to run or pass. They'll run the reverse with Cooper. He's in trouble. Jack Jones was not fooled, and that may take them out of field goal range. A loss of 11 on the play. It was a good call. They just didn't execute it properly. Well, actually, I can't. I won't even go so far as to say they didn't execute it. Jock Jones just made a tremendous play. What they're trying to do is set up the option, which they've run so well to the wide side, and get Virginia Tech to over pursue. Fortunately for Virginia Tech, Jock Jones stayed home, made the play. Chris Kardaki, the freshman, will attempt the 48-yarder now in the scrimmage that they had here a couple of weeks ago. He kicked a 58-yarder, so it's within his range. the distance but it's off to the side so the loss of 11 yards may have affected Gardaki but it's very difficult you can kick those 58 yarders in a scrimmage Ben but when you get out here for real it's a little bit tougher 11 and a half minutes left in the third quarter Virginia Tech has dodged a bullet we'll be back after this from your local ACC station Back live at Frank Howard Field, Kevin Slayton along with Ben Bennett, the former Duke All-American quarterback, 31-7 Clemson. But they just uh, intercepted a pass deep in Virginia Tech territory and ended up missing a field goal. Near the end of the first half, they recovered a fumble deep in Virginia Tech territory and were able to only cash in for three. So two turnovers have resulted in just three points, and Danny Ford will not like that. On first down at Jeffries. That one was slow in developing, and Reggie Harris, the junior out of Gaffney, South Carolina, number 24, was quick to close the hole. Will Fuhrer bobbled the snap, and he dropped that football. It would have been complete chaos because everybody's pulling in opposite directions. I don't know that anybody would have seen the football except for Will Fuhrer. Fuhrer will roll to the right. Down the middle of McCall, he breaks a tackle by Beasley and is corralled at the 43 and has the first down. Mariable was there to make the tackle after he broke Beasley's hit. Good job by McCall to hold on and pick up nine. Offensively, you want to make plays look the same. On this play action pass, they're simulating the run that they just called and hitting the tight end out in the flat. Beasley came up, made the hit but didn't make the tackle. Subsequently, Brian McCall turned around and got first down yardage. Beasley went back and nearly took the head of McCall off. He'll get a breather, and well-deserved. Fuhrer has time, guns it for Richardson, and Wolford nearly took him apart. Boy, there's no wonder that that kid is an All-American in everybody's book. He's a great player. In addition to being a tremendous athlete, he has very good defensive instincts. One of the things that Virginia Tech is not doing is they haven't really challenged Clemson deep, which allows Clemson's defensive backs, which already have a tremendous amount of speed, to play a little bit closer and take chances on the shorter passes. It could cost Virginia Tech late in the game. Second and 10, they'll go with the draw. Black and straight up the gut crosses midfield. Taylor is there to stop him, got help from Smith, number 28, but I don't know if he stopped him short of the first down. It's awfully close. It looks like he is a little short. They picked up about nine on that one, and it'll be third and short. Malcolm Blacken has been very impressive for Virginia Tech, the senior out of Beaverlet, Virginia. You have a lot more options when you have third and two than when you have third and nine. They run Blacken again, and he has the first down before he's thrown back by Taylor, number 58. But he certainly penetrated deeply enough in order to pick up the Virginia Tech first down, and they're doing it on the ground. Well, they're going to measure, but it appears that he has it by at least the length of the football. Just basic straight ahead football. They're not trying to fool anybody. They're just trying to get their fullback up in there for first down yardage. Had he not stumbled over his own man who had gotten driven back into the backfield, 
he very easily would have picked up the first down. Well, they spotted that ball back, and they've, he, they've marked it short of the first down. Oh, it'll be a big play now for, Cle for Clemson's defense. And for Virginia Tech, of course, they have no choice but to go for it. Similar to what Clemson did, look for Will Fuhrer to carry the football. He gives it to Fox, and he has the first down. So the big man comes in and picks up the first down. Vance Hammond, number nine, he was there to stop him. When in doubt, just give it to your best player, Fox, who showed a great second effort on a uh, first down as well as a touchdown run. Again, just puts his head down and picks up the first down. So en route to this impressive drive on the ground, they've also kept the ball away from Clemson. Here are guns it outside for Cullen, and he has it zipped through his hand. Should have been a catch. James Lott was over there defending, but as you say, Ben, Cullen was there, he was open, and the ball was delivered on target. You can't ask for a lot better pass than that. It's just a, a deep comeback pattern. Would have given him first down yardage. Cullen just let it slip through his hands. You quarterbacks love to see that, don't you? <laughs> we dream about things like that. Second and 10 for Virginia Tech from the Clemson 45. 9-14 remaining in the third quarter. Clemson in command at this point, 31-7. Smith comes to the outside, straight arms one tackler, flag goes down as he gets inside the 35. Beasley came up from the secondary to make the stop. They may have grabbed a face mask while he straight armed. Absolutely. Oh, it's gonna work against Clem Clemson. But maybe Beasley returned the favor. It's never the original center, you know, that gets caught. It's always the guy that retaliates. It's an inadvertent one. Face mask on the defense. First down. Yep, that's exactly what it was. The original center, Smith, got away with it. Or Brown, I should say. Ralph Brown. Now, see, the offensive player is allowed to put out his hand to keep people off. You just can't hang on to the face mask. There goes Fox over the right side, carrying tacklers with him. Mark Drag was there, and he got some help from Mariable, who has been a, been a very active linebacker today. There's Drag 85, and Mariable 56 has been all over the place. Clemson's defense is comprised of a very veteran bunch of players, and they're also very physical. If they can get around you, they're going to put a hurt on you. Blacken and Ralph Brown are in there now in the Virginia Tech backfield as they face second down and eight. From the Clemson 28. Brown runs into Fuhrer, but he still snakes his way upfield near the 25. Off. Beasley was in the backfield almost as quickly as the handoff was made. Off balance, he made a great play to turn his body sideways, keep his balance, and fall forward for some good positive yardage. Steve Marshall, the offensive coordinator of Virginia Tech, picked up four yards that time, and it's a big third and four for Virginia Tech. Fuhrer will put it in the air under pressure. Johnson chasing it. Down he goes at the 35. Second sack of the day for John Johnson, the sophomore of LaGrange, Georgia. Will Fuhrer, again, trying to make all the plays himself. Gets a little gets a little pressure in the pocket and scrambles out. You need to get rid of the football here, whether you throw it at somebody that you think can, that can get hold of it on your own team or just to throw it away to avoid the loss, especially when you're this close to getting a field goal. They're going to punt it away. Fitzgerald will come on and kick it away. Lot is deep. He tries to hang it up there, but he's going to catch the end zone on the fly. And it'll come out to the 20. Fuhrer went off holding his left shoulder, his passing shoulder. He had surgery on that shoulder for a separation last year. He said it was stronger than it was before the injury. He told me yesterday, but he was holding it as he went off. We'll be back with more college football from Clemson in a moment. And that game will come your way two weeks from today on September 17th. The rambling wreck of head coach Bobby Ross expected to be much improved in his second year. And then over to Virginia. They'll play that one in Charlottesville. George Walsh will be waiting for him there. 
First down, Clemson from their own 20. Kevin Slayton along with Ben Bennett. Glad you're with us. A quick toss comes back to Henderson. Nowhere to go there, though. Lucas was in the backfield first, along with Leslie Bailey, number 44. Al Shambley, number 97, also got in there. But it was Virginia Lucas, Tech, number five, who forced the play. The Virginia Tech defense does a good job here of stringing out the play. As long as you've got a running back running side to side, he's not going to pick up any yards, and he probably won't hurt you very much. Lost the yard on that play, so it'll be second down and 11. Johnson and Henderson are the setbacks. Williams with a quick toss to Hooper. And Hooper fighting across the 31. Well, Ricardo, one extra yardage, finally knocked out by Granby. And it is a first down for Clemson. Same play they've run three or four times successfully. Fake to the fullback and just stand up and stick the wide receiver. The reason this is effective is because Clemson has been running the football so well, Virginia Tech has to put a lot of bodies up on the front to try and stop the run. Great story Hooper is. He's a grad student. He was a walk-on here at Clemson. And in a conference that emphasizes student athletes, he is one that sticks out. First down, Tracy Johnson straight up the middle. He gets a couple before he's wrapped up by Horatio Miranda. Clemson is in no hurry to run plays right now. As the clock ticks down, they've still got a 24-point lead. They want to execute their offense, pile up some yards, wear down Virginia Tech, and get out of this one healthy. Six minutes remaining in the third quarter. It's been a work day for Tracy Johnson playing on a sprained ankle. Second and seven. Had that hard-charging touchdown run in the second quarter. Williams to the air, guns it for Cooper, Gary Cooper in Virginia Tech territory at the 45. Scott Rice ran him out of bounds, and Ben Williams threw that ball with authority. That's the best pass either QB has thrown all day. Flag is down. You've got a play action pass here, faking the off tackle, and what you've got is the inside receiver running a corner pattern and getting open in between the short corner and the deep safety. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct. On the defense, first down. Well, somebody got carried away on the far side, and maybe it was indeed head coach Frank Beamer, and if it wasn't him, he's going to get his two cents in now. Well, it's bad enough to give up the big play when you're down 24 points, but it's another thing to add insult to injury and get a penalty thrown on when Clemson is already on the move. 21 yards on the pickup, add 15 more on, and they've got it now down at the 31 of Virginia Tech. McFadden and Henderson are the running backs. Wesley McFadden hitting the backfield, gets away, has some room. Rice is chasing him, but he gets down at a 20 before he's corralled by Rice at Granby. Two things that make this play are second effort and the downfield blocks. It should have been a loss of one or two yards. McFadden instead bounces off the tackle and gets into the secondary. You'll see him bounce outside here and run off the blocks of the linemen getting downfield and the wide receivers. Keith Jennings throwing a good block there. And Ricardo Hooper also. We saw Williams throw that last pass. And he was saying that he'd like to throw it more. Danny Ford said he thinks he will throw it more this year. Johnson straight up the middle doesn't find much running room there. Hill on the bottom of that pile, number 66. It's a tough game, folks. Wake Forest, the Demon Deacons opening up. And a 17-0 lead over Villanova. Ooh, Washington State really putting it to Illinois. 30-7. Jeff George must not be doing much. Clemson will play Furman next week as they tune up for the Florida State game. But Furman a little bit more impressive than most Clemson folks wanted them to be. Williams pitches it behind Henderson. That'll destroy the timing of that play. Sean Lucas came up from the secondary, number five, and he got lots of help from his friends, including Rich Williams, number 83. Good pressure on Rodney Williams made him throw the pitch behind, and it's timing the entire play. You know, you said earlier about how Danny Ford said they may need to throw, they may like to throw the football more this year. You know, when you've got a stable of tailbacks and fullbacks like Clemson does, and there's an old saying, why fix it if it ain't broke? Tracy Johnson hoping that ankle isn't broken. Playing today with a sprained ankle. 
Third and nine. Henry Carter in there at fullback for the first time, number 40. They run the draw with Henderson. Look out, he's inside the five. Touchdown! Block from Ricardo Hooper downfield helps spring him. And Henderson has his second touchdown run of the day. And now Rusty Sile will come back on and kick the conversion. So Danny Ford rotating his kickers today. Whistles blow as Sile knocks it through, but they'll have to do it again. Flags are down. We'll get another look at the touchdown run of 19 yards by Henderson. The delay of game against Clemson will show that touchdown run to you momentarily. Our referee's microphone, I'm not working uh, on that sequence, but the, the delay of game will move it back five yards and force Sile now to kick a 25-yard point after. And it slides off to the right. So the penalty may have made a difference. Here we go, a la Timmy Smith and the Washington Redskins. They try to get flow strong and just bring the tailback back weak. Again, look at the block downfield by Ricardo Hooper. He's the one that makes the end of that touchdown run possible. And Henderson puts the finishing touch on it. Henderson makes a great individual effort here. He's got good speed, and again, these Clemson backs, when they get close, they know how to get themselves into the end zone. Henderson has his second touchdown of the day. He has 75 yards on seven carries, averaging better than 10 per carry. 347 left in the third quarter. We'll be back after this from your local ACC station. Sir, would you? For the last five times these teams have met, the decision was by seven or less, but not so today, at least thus far. In the 24th meeting between these two teams, it's been all Clemson. Let's go down on the field now to Chris Allen. Thank you. I was just talking to Tracy Johnson, who came out of the game. He'd had a sprained ankle earlier and was going to have some problems running. In fact, they kept him from running down the hill when the rest of the team came in, so he didn't have any problems with that. But just a little while ago, he went and twisted the same ankle again, but he tells me it's something totally different than what had happened previously. Still, Tracy Johnson here on the sidelines with ice on his ankle right now. Kevin? All right, Chris, it's doubtful that we'll see Tracy Johnson anymore today, although he seems to be able to walk on it all right. But why take a chance when you're up 30? We talked about the charge down the hill as Clemson begins to warm up some backups. Cameron getting loose, so is Morocco down on the sideline. So we'll see who goes in at quarterback the next time they get the ball. But uh, we talked about the charge down the hill. 73% uh, of the time when they come down the hill, Clemson has won. So it's been an effective tradition. You see Richardson and Jeffries deep guard. Docky set to kick it off to them. So this is his first chance to kick it off. If he has a stronger leg for Cooper. It's Jeffries at the eight. He is hit and not in a hurry. Chuck O'Brien and Arlington Nunn got in there first. As Clemson gets farther and farther ahead in this game, it's a great opportunity for Danny Ford to see what he has in reserve. A lot of these guys may not be the first teamers that they normally send down on a kickoff team, merely because they want to see if some other guys are willing to throw their heads around and get down in there and make a tackle. So from their own 25, Virginia Tech will put it in play first down. Fuhrer remains at quarterback. Brown and Fox in the setback. It's going to be Brown. He's got some room on the outside. Cuts it upfield and crosses the 30 before he is run down by David Davis, a freshman from Eastover, South Carolina. 
Boy, all kinds of warm, fresh bodies coming in now defensively for Clemson. Surprisingly, Clemson blitzed their linebackers on this play. Again, they're running the counter here. Had Brown been able to get outside of number 31, he might have gone the distance because everybody else was bottled up on the inside. He picked up six, and Fox gets to the 35, and once more, David Davis making his bid to get his name known in the minds of the coaching staff makes the tackle. Well, you know, one of the reasons they do this is to save their offense, to save their players. They don't want their first teamers to get hurt. But in addition to that, injuries are going to happen later on in the year. You want to find out what you've got behind your first team. And they're finding out, and David Davis, they've got a good one. Third and one, they run Fox. It's hit, sheds a tackle, and appears to have the first down, but we'll wait and see. And McDaniel, another freshman out of Batesburg, South Carolina, and Arlington Dunn, number 39, made the tackle. These are not easy yards to come by. When you've got second teamers coming in, they're hungry. They want to show people what they can do, and they're going to pop you. So Tim Fo or, uh, Rich Fox is not going to get some easy yards here. They did pick up the first down. Fuhrer to throw on first down. Down the middle he goes and completes it. The barefoot, the tight end at the 45, and he had people hanging all over him. Ed McDaniel was the one who had his arms wrapped around him. And O'Brien was close by. Again, Fewer right on the money with the pass across the middle. But you see how quickly Clemson's defenders were on the tight end. That tells you that they're not dropping deep into coverage. Picked up eight, it'll be second and two. Quick toss to Jeffries. Tries the right side, has a first down as he gets into Clemson territory at the 49-yard line before Rusty Sharpio came, came up to make the tackle number 31 and got some help from LeVon Kirkland, number 44. Each time Virginia Tech has made a good drive, they've done it by getting good yardage on first down and leaving themselves some options on second down. Here with second and two, all they have to do is pick up two yards, they go with the power sweep, pick up the first down, and they got another set of downs. And they're in Clemson territory. Fuhrer on first down, chased him behind. Harps was after him, but he gets away. Now he guns it complete to barefoot, I believe. A flag is down. He may well have been out of bounds when he caught it. We'll wait and see what all the discussion will be about. Two things happen when your quarterback starts scrambling around. Your lineman may have already thought that the ball's downfield, and they may have gone down to throw a block. And two, they may not know where your QB is and end up holding so that they don't get to him. Well, whatever it is, it'll work against Virginia Tech. Dan Osborne receiver downfield on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. So that'll cost them five, and they'll replay the down. One of the line for that, heading downfield, where they thought that Fuhrer was going to get away. You can see Fuhrer peeking back over his shoulder. That may be designed in the offense, but that's not something you want to have your quarterback doing. You don't want him looking over his shoulder when he's dropping back to pass. They'll run the draw with Fox. He's wrapped up and down he goes. J.C. Harper, the senior hometown boy out of Clemson, South Carolina, number 77, made the tackle. Picked up a couple. It'll be second and 13. Rich Fox is earning his scholarship right now. These are not easy yards. He's getting hammered by two and three guys every time he gets his hands on the ball. 45 seconds remaining in the third quarter. 37 to 7, Clemson leading Virginia Tech. The Tigers came in here ranked as high as fourth in the country in the AP poll. And they showed why today. Fuhrer able to shed one tackle. Now he drills and it's intercepted. Intercepted on the near side by Dexter Davis. So another freshman, he out of Sumter, South Carolina, comes up with the turnover, the third that works against Virginia Tech. Now let's see, the officials are going to discuss it. One official said it was incomplete, apparently. This one says, no, I saw it clearly. It belongs to Clemson. What an effort from Dexter Davis. Two things caused this interception. One, the receiver didn't keep coming back. On a comeback pattern, he needs to come back to the receiver. Two, Will Fuhrer didn't see the receiver soon enough, waited too long to deliver the ball, and gave Davis a chance to break up on it and make the interception. 
Chris Morocco comes in at quarterback for Clemson, number eight, as Fuhrer talks it over. His second interception of the day. Henry Carter is in at fullback, number 40. He goes to the tailback for his first carry, Charlie James, the freshman out of Shaw, Mississippi. 17 ticks, and it's ticking away as we prepare to end the third quarter of action. There's a look at Morocco. He'll get his time next year. Chances are he'll get plenty of playing time this year. You know, when we talked to Coach Beamer yesterday, we asked him how long, if it became, if the game got out of hand, we asked him how long he would leave in Will Fuhrer. He said until it became detrimental to Will Fuhrer's health. It's rapidly approaching that as we end the third quarter with Clemson well in hand, 37 to 7. We'll be back with more college football in the ACC in a moment. The color and pageantry of college football alive in Death Valley. Kevin Slayton and Ben Bennett, glad you could join us for our season opener here along the ACC network. And Clemson is looking good, 37 to 7. Second down, Morocco pitches it back to James, tries the right side, carries a tackler, Sean Lucas, near midfield before he's finally brought down. Good effort from James on that play. Well, you see guys just flying around the pile down there. Everybody's trying to make a name for themselves. Everybody wants to have something to talk about at the post-game party. They want to say, yeah, you should have seen me on this play. I went down and did this. Even if he didn't do it, they want to have something to talk about. The third quarter stats... Virginia Tech outgained Clemson, but the only score of the third quarter was a 19-yard Joe Henderson touchdown for Clemson. Clemson was very workmanlike in the third quarter. Nothing flashy, just get the job done. Third and four, Morocco with his first pass. Oh, that'll, be, that'll bring a flag, and it does. Rodney Fletcher was the intended receiver, but Jock Jones, I believe, he was in the vicinity. We'll wait and see who bumped into him. It may well have been Scott Rice, number 38. I think Roger Brown, rather than play the ball, played the receiver and came up. If he had looked at the On ball, the defense, I believe he might have had an interception here. Instead, he went for the hit. And it was Scott Rice. And uh, I'll tell you something, though, Ben. You look at Morocco, and he zinged it in there. That was a perfect. It was a, a very well-thrown ball. He had every chance in the world to catch it until, of course, he was rocked. So well, that'll cost them. It's first down now at the Virginia Tech 36 for Clemson. Morocco keeps it himself and gets maybe a yard. I'm sure one of the things Danny Ford is looking, looking to do here is not to run up the score. A lot of people would ask, why throw the ball deep when you're up by 30 points? He's not trying to rub it in. He's just simply trying to find out what he's got behind Rodney Williams. Take him one yard. Witten and Pack, number 96 and 91, combined to make the stop as Danny Ford. You never know that he had a 30-point lead with that look. With pitch back to James over the left side, has some room. Scott Rice, number 38, comes up to make the tackle out of the secondary, but he's close to another first down, and things are getting a little bit unruly down on the field. That's Henry Carter. He was all the way downfield throwing a block. You know, frustration starts to set in when you start losing and you're getting beat up every single play. That's why fists are going to start to fly and tempers flare. It's it, it's not part of the game, but it's it's inevitable. It's going to happen. Leslie Bailey and Jeff Back getting into it. Timeout on the field, 13-16 remaining. We'll be back after this from your local ACC station. When people talk about hotbeds of college football, they have to start here in Clemson. 78,000 plus on hand today, and you know, they talk about all the spirit here. A couple of years ago, back in 1978, they journeyed to Raleigh for a game against North Carolina State and forced North Carolina State not to hear their own signals in their own stadium. So they can get noisy here in Death Valley. Henry Carter trying the right side, and he gets a couple. Close to the first down, but I believe he's short of it. To say that these are rabid fans here in Clemson would be an understatement. These people love their football down here, and they make no bones about it. They come from all parts of South Carolina, Georgia, 
and they enjoy it. It's a weekend of fun. Washington State, same score that we have here. They lead Illinois. Gardaki is going to come on and try one from about 44 yards. Citadel out in front, or Citadel trailing, I should say, at the half. Well, they missed one earlier, and now a timeout. They may not have enough players. Morocco quickly calls for the timeout. He Seem saw something he didn't like, Ben. Seemed to be some sort of confusion about whether they were going to kick or not. And then the 25-second clock was running down, so they called timeout to avoid the five-yarder. Twelve and a half minutes remaining. Will Fuhrer making his first collegiate start. It's a forgettable one for him, although he certainly did not succumb to the pressure. He threw two interceptions, but one of them was a deflected ball off his own receiver's hands, and another one was just a sensational play by Dexter Davis. So from that standpoint, it's not a disappointment for Fuhrer, and he did some things well, Ben. He, he played well for his first start. you got to remember, one, he's playing against one of the best teams in the country, and two, playing in a very difficult stadium to win in. You throw in the fact that he's surrounded by guys that are almost as useful as he is, and there's a lot of cards stacked against you. I think he did an admirable job today, and it's a, it's a good learning experience for him. I think he's going to learn a lot from this. He hit on 10 of 22 passes to this point. 54 yards. He was never able to really get downfield. and never really attempted to. Let's see if Gardaki can drill it through there. He's got an air word. It looks good. And it is. So the freshman Gardaki adds a field goal to the lead. This one from 43 yards. He booted one from 38 earlier. And it's 40 to 7. Clemson with 12, 26 remaining. We'll be back with more college football in a moment. Chris Gardaki, the freshman from Stone Mountain, Georgia. The sign of a good kicker is to keep your head down, which Gardaki does very well there. Ball goes right through, 43-yarder, count it for three. 40 to 7, the Tigers of Clemson. Opening defense of their ACC championship that they won a year ago, culminating with that big victory, 35 to 10 over Penn State in the Citrus Bowl. Had a 10 and 2 season. They'd like to do it again and maybe improve on that. Kubu will kick off. I asked Danny Ford yesterday whether he thought uh, this team, this year's edition, compared favorably with his national champions in 1981. And he said, the problem is you really don't know how good this team is until you see them play. And he feels like this year's team has a lot higher expectations coming in than that 81 team did. Nobody really thought and dared to dream the dream of the national championship before that 81 season began. Boo-Boo's kicked, rolls out of bounds, and he'll have to do it again. But this year's team, Ben, has all the tools necessary that builds a national champion, a very strong veteran defense. Great running attack and a very powerful offensive line. They've got a lot of senior leadership, which is, is almost fundamental to having a great team. If you don't have somebody that steps to the forefront and takes over and takes charge, your team doesn't really have an identity. Between Wolford, Williams, and the rest of the seniors that they have on this veteran team, they've got that leadership that they need, and that can pull them through a lot of close games. And they're going to find out a lot about themselves in a couple of weeks when they battle Florida State right here in Death Valley. Should be a great game. Florida State ranked number one in the preseason polls. Here comes Jeffries. Looking for that seam, but he runs into Harps, number 16, and he gets only to about the 35-yard line. And that is where Virginia Tech will put it in play, a 26-yard return. Now we're going to go back down to the sidelines and check in with our man, Chris Allen. Chris? Thank you very much. I'm on the sidelines. You see a couple of Williams side by side. Rodney Williams, the quarterback. Pat Williams not in uniform right now. He was injured in the second quarter. He tells me it's quite minor. He expects to be back next week, but boy, they're not going to take any chances. And the way the score is going today, I suppose a lot of guys aren't going to take any chances out on the field. Fuhrer remains at quarterback for Virginia Tech. The quick toss to Brown. He doesn't get too far. Ed McDaniel, the freshman number 93, was the first to greet him. And he got some help from Tyron Muzon, number 47. Going back to what we were talking about earlier, when we talked to Coach Beamer yesterday and asked him how long he was going to leave Will Fuhrer in, 
if it got to be a route, he said, I'll leave him in until it becomes detrimental to Will Fuhrer. Evidently, he figures Will Fuhrer needs to build some more confidence and has left him in. Pickup of a yard. Malcolm Blacken crosses the 40. Otis Moore was there, number 81. It's going to bring up about third and four. Frank Beaver in his second year at Virginia Tech has seen all too much of the Tigers here today. Third and four for the Hokies. They'll run the draw. And he's wrapped up shy of the first down. Mervyn Green, number 99, was the first man in there. And he was able to wrestle Lamar Smith to the ground. Danny Sizer, number 54, also went on the tackle. He just came into the game. The draw play has worked well for Virginia Tech on occasion. Unfortunately, they've used it when they needed a big first down. Clemson finally catches on and stops it. Clemson able to get one of their players off the field just in time. Flag is down, so maybe they didn't get him off in time. Dexter Davis is run out of bounds on the far side, so we'll check the flag. And if it's not against Clemson, they will have it spotted at the 30-yard line. It appeared as though Ed McDaniel was trying to get off the field and did not get off in time. The problem you run into late in the game when a team has substituted a lot of people in, normally you have first and second teamers on offense and defense, but you also have first and second teamers on special teams, and there tends to be a lot of confusion when you don't substitute Illegal everybody at once. 13 men on the field, on the receiving team, 15 yards, first down. Well, if you're going to cheat, cheat big. They didn't just have 12 on, they had 13 on. And that'll give Virginia Tech a first down. Somebody's going to get chewed on the sidelines, you'd guess. I, I wouldn't want it to be me, I can tell you that. That will keep the drive alive at the Clemson 42-yard line. So Fuhrer brings his offense back out with Blacken at fullback. Brown is the tailback number three, and he gets the toss. Comes to the near side, and there is that man again at McDaniel, 93 at the bottom of the pile, gets through first. Tell you what, Ben, for a freshman, he is going to make his name known here in a hurry. Again, like Tim Fox, he's, earn he's earning his scholarship. He's running the, ball running the ball hard. He's taking a lot of shots, but he just keeps popping back up and coming back every play. The rushing numbers pretty well tell a story that would result in a 40 to 7 Clemson lead as we approach the 10 minute mark remaining in this game. Second and eight after a two yard pickup. Fuhrer will throw. Goes downfield, oh, right through the hands of Tyron Mozan, the freshman from Clearwater, Florida. He won't get many more opportunities for an interception that are better than that one. Well, we've talked all day about not going deep downfield. Here they tried it and almost got stung for it. Fear comes back into the pocket, and what they're trying to do is stretch the two deep zone. He throws for his receiver going up the sideline, but unfortunately, as he stares at his receiver and pumps, it gives 47 a time to, a chance to come over and make a break on the ball. Should have had an interception. Third and eight for Virginia Tech. Your, oh, another one is dropped. This time, Chuck O'Brien, a sophomore from Frederick, Maryland, had the opportunity. Fuhrer threw that ball with Richard McCullough right in his face. One of the differences you'll find between a freshman quarterback and a senior quarterback, a freshman quarterback will tend to have tunnel vision and will follow his receiver all the way down the field. Fuhrer tends to do that on occasion, and it's gotten him in trouble the last two plays. A high punt. Davis calls for a fair catch, but he gave it up too soon. He came running out of there. Virginia Tech's players trying to get down there in time to down it, but they couldn't. So it'll go out to the 20 with 9.43 remaining. Clemson has this one in hand. They lead 40-7, to and we'll be back with more college football from Death Valley, South Carolina, after this. From today, over all of these Jefferson Pilot Teleproduction stations and our ACC network, Clemson and Danny Ford having things their way here this afternoon. Kevin Slayton along with Ben Bennett. Glad you could join us for this one as Clemson opening defense of their ACC title. 
doing it impressively. Morocco drops the snap and does all they can to get back on it. We talked a lot about Fuhrer being a freshman quarterback. And here's what happens to Morocco. Just didn't quite get a grip on it. But Ben, you've been there as a freshman. You've started as a freshman. You've also played as a senior. And there has to be a big difference between that. Today, Fuhrer, the freshman, the senior Williams. There is a big difference. And after this play, I'll, I'll give you a little analogy so that you can relate a little bit to what it's like to be a freshman quarterback. Morocco drills it in there to Chip Davis. So Morocco, the junior, loosening up his arm. If you think back to when you ever learned how to drive a four-speed, you know, when you first got in there, there was the clutch and the brake and the gas. And everything just, everything was so confusing. Well, after you did it a whole bunch, you can drive up and down the road and eat a hamburger and drink a Coke. And it just, it's just like, you don't even pay attention to shifting. And that's what it's like running a football team. Once you do it, do it, do it, you get used to it, and you get to the point where you can do it well without having to concentrate on a lot of the little things. Bobby Martin really put the hit on Reggie Lawrence that time. We saw Rodney Williams on the bench there. It appeared as though he has an ice pack on his right arm. Maybe his elbow, maybe his shoulder, but that's either to, there it is up on his shoulder. So I, I would not imagine that's customary. Saw a picture of Rodney Williams kicking back and smiling and enjoying himself. He wanted me to say hello to Mike Davis, his best friend in Columbia that just got married. Congratulations, Michael. David Weaver will try to put it away, and he has it blocked. Flag is down. Flag is down. Jock Jones got through there to block it. Weaver sent in there to punt for the first time today, and he's not feeling real good. I'll tell you what, he may have gotten his leg injured on that play because he kicked it right into the face of Jock Davis. Well, this is what Virginia Tech did to Clemson last year when they played him. On the kicking team, Decline. First down going this way. Virginia Tech last year put a lot of pressure on Clemson and come back around this year and Jock Jones blocks himself a punt. Weaver, a junior out of St. Charles, Illinois. And they're still tending to him down on the field. Let's see if we can spot his injury. In his... He got it right there when the leg was vulnerable and exposed. Really wasn't on the block itself. It was on the follow through where Jock Jones could not stop himself perfectly legal too there's nothing wrong with with hitting the kicker once you block the ball appears to be in the abdomen area Damn you, Weaver. it's a shame for Virginia Tech they couldn't have done this earlier in the game a blocked punt a blocked field goal an interception return for a touchdown is something that really gives you a, a super emotional boost unfortunately it comes at 757 left in the fourth quarter and down by 33 points Young man appears to be in some severe pain. <laughs> One of the things that happens when punters kick the ball, they tend to they tend to be perfectly stretched out and extended farther than they normally would on any other on any other play. And when you get hit, that's what happens. He's up under eight minutes left. We'll be back to Death Valley for more football after this. David Weaver being tended to on the Clemson bench after having that punt block. And it may be, Ben, that his, his leg was hit with such force that it pulled or tore a muscle in his abdomen area. And that's a painful injury. I can tell you that from personal experience. Blacken tries the left side, doesn't get very far before he's met by Chuck O'Brien. Under eight minutes remaining in this contest that Clemson has been impressive, 40 to seven lead. Two touchdown day for Joe Henderson, the third team tailback in this ball club. Gives you a little idea of the depth that they possess. You know, even though Virginia Tech scores here, it won't make a huge difference in the score or the outcome of the game. It would give them a lot of confidence. They could say, listen, we came back, we kept fighting until the end. Brown gets else. only a couple to the 21 before nothing else is there. If nothing else, it's a confidence builder. Well, and the thing that you're impressed by is the effort of Jock Jones. He's a starting linebacker in there on special teams, and he comes through and blocks a punt. Washington State is pouring it on Illinois. Jeff George may wish he were still at Purdue. 31-3, Wake Forest, another ACC team opening big. 
Appalachian State with a big lead. Fuhrer in trouble. Oh, he's crunched him. He loses the ball this time. And I believe Clemson will have it. I don't know how they couldn't have it. They do. David Davis, number 97, the first to make the hit. Harps as well was back there, and so was number 90, Vance Hammond. Well, if they were leaving Will Fuhrer in to, to, to build his confidence back up, this isn't the kind of play that'll do it. Wayne Harps, number 16, recovers the fumble. You know, something you can't see, this is a tremendous shot that Will Fuhrer takes. Something you don't see from the replay, Fuhrer popped right back up and got off the field like nothing had happened. Cameron in there running the offense now as he pitches it back to James. DeShane Cameron. He's just a freshman out of LaGrange, Georgia, six foot 195 pounder. There is Davis. What a day he has had. Clemson overall has had six sacks. Davis, just a freshman out of Eastover, South Carolina. It seems that we've called his name all afternoon, and he didn't start the game. Second and seven after a pickup of three by James. Cameron in trouble, and he's going nowhere. He's wrestled down by Archie Hopkins. Cameron was very fortunate on that play that he didn't decide to turn and pitch the ball back and get away from pressure. The tailback went the wrong way on the fake, and if he turned to pitch, he would have been pitching to Coach Ford because that's about all that was standing over there. Those things tend to happen when you've got third and fourth teamers in there. Clemson is deep, I'll tell you that. It'll be third and 12 for the Tigers as you look at Fuhrer over on the Virginia Tech bench. Cameron's going to get a chance to throw under pressure. It's knocked up in the air, nearly intercepted by Granby. But it was Hill, Scott Hill, and Sean Lucas who combined to put pressure on the young quarterback. I don't care who you are or how good you are, it's almost impossible to throw a ball well off your back. When you've got somebody laying on top of you, it makes things a little bit more difficult than the normal times. Gardaki is in there, and he's going to punt. So we'll get a look at his punting style. We've seen him convert two of three field goals. As Danny Ford's only sore spot, the kicking game. A mystery that remains perhaps unsolved in part. They got another one. Oh, boy, did he kiss it. Fair catch. Richardson is an old 22. Now maybe they've solved the kicking problem in total. And the man that will solve it is the freshman Gardaki. He brings the crowd to its feet. That was unbelievable because Jock Jones was less than an inch away from blocking his second punt. We'll be back after this from your local ACC station. Gardaki booted a 48-yarder under pressure, Ben. This was so close to being blocked. Again, it looked like if he had laid out, he might have had it. And instead, Gardaki just rocketed one all the way back to the 22-yard line. And that's Do where Virginia something. Tech puts it in play. And they'll stick with Fuhrer as their quarterback. He's getting a dose of education today. And he'll run the draw play with Bryant. Or Smith, Lamar Smith this time, number 28. Bryant in there at fullback, number 29, as Frank Beamer continues to settle his backs. And I'm not sure who the injured player is. One of the offensive linemen. This is a draw play that they've been running most of the day, except they ran it to the tailback this time. The offensive line opened a good hole. He makes some good moves and gets into the secondary. Mark Briscoe, the big center, number 77, being helped off as Lamar Smith moves the stakes forward. I tell you, this is something you hate to see ever, but especially late in the game when the, when the outcome is already decided. You hate to see people get hurt. 14-yard pickup for Smith. Now they'll try Bryant. And he gets to the 38 before he's wrestled down. Chuck O'Brien, number 38, and Danny Sizer, number 54, combining on the stop with Bryant. 
Again, just running the base draw play, just out of a different formation, trying to get the Clemson play, the Clemson defensive line to run up field and get down with the uh, other backs on the linebacker. Some of the sellout crowd begins to head for the exits. Fuhrer completes the pass. He gets it to Bryant, makes a nice move, gets to midfield, and he's run out of bounds. So Lamar Smith on the reception. Another first down for Virginia Tech. These are the things that Virginia Tech needed to do well early and didn't execute. They needed to throw the screens effectively, and they needed to run the draws. Here the screen set up beautifully, and watch him set up his blocks. He cuts back inside and lets his linemen pick up downfield tacklers. That's what allows him to get the extra yards. Back to the action, Fuhrer to throw. Guns it outside, completes it again. Short yardage this time, barely got back to the line of scrimmage before Reggie Harris able to wrestle Bryant down. A little bit easier to complete those passes against the third team or so. <laughs> those are easy passes to complete anyhow, but yeah, it is, it is a little bit easier when you've got guys that are not exactly sure of what they're doing, but they just know they're doing it full speed. That's the day for Will Fuhrer in his first collegiate start. He's going to throw again. Steps up into the pocket, drills and completes Lamar Smith. Short of the first down and short of the 40. Chuck O'Brien there on the hit. Will Fuhrer has, has done something exceptionally well today. He's gotten out of, out of harm's way. He steps up in the pocket nicely, and he tends to avoid pressure very well. Unfortunately, if you have to do that on a regular basis, there's times when a quarterback will start avoiding pressure that isn't there. 40 to 7, Clemson leads. He tries to get it outside. A nice catch by Richardson. And that's enough for a first down at the 26-yard line. Well, with three minutes remaining, Ben, from what I've seen of Clemson today, it would certainly appear that all of the lofty talk in the preseason is justified. Well, one game doesn't make a national championship, but they're definitely making strides in the right direction. Looking at the replay here, Fuhrer threw this ball late and threw it a long ways. He still made a, <laughs> he still made a great throw. That was a great catch. Richardson with only his second catch of the day. And this time they run the draw to Smith, spins out of one tackle, and gets inside the 25 as LeVon Kirkland makes the tackle number 44. Something that can work against Virginia Tech, not necessarily in this game, but later on in the season. When you tend to play a team and you're behind by a bunch and they've got their, their third and four teamers in there, you can get away with some things against them that you can't against regular teams. And if you get it in your mind that you can do certain things, you'll try it regardless. And it could come back to hurt them later on. Fuhrer gets his slam back in his face by Danny Sizer, number 54. Danny Ford will pocket another victory here today, the 77th of his career here as the head coach of Clemson, beginning his 10th year. He's the sixth act active win sixth most successful active coach in terms of winning percentage. That's easy for you to say. It was a little bit tough that time. <laughs> Fuhrer throwing on every down. Guns it incomplete right into the hands of Smith, but he dropped it. When it rains, it pours. Two and a half minutes remaining. I'd like to see one time before this game's over, I'd like to see Virginia Tech run their backs short and run their wide receivers in behind the linebackers because the linebackers are all over their backs and their receivers should be open down across the middle, downfield. Key words there, should be. Here it takes the drop down the middle. He goes deflected off the hands of his receiver, and it goes incomplete. Well, I have to say thank you to Will Fuhrer. <laughs> I, asked him, I asked him for something, and he turned around and gave it to me. And you know, one thing he'll learn, Ben, as he goes along, even though the ball was catchable, you, you have to have a little bit of touch on the ball. A lot, he, a lot of people make a big issue out of the strength of somebody's arm or how far or how hard they can throw it. A lot of times that's important. <laughs> But more times than not, I would rather take a guy with a little less strength in his arm that can put the ball on the money and throw a catchable pass. Heath Hewitt comes in at quarterback for Clemson, their fourth quarterback of the day, a freshman out of Whiteville, North Carolina. So everybody's getting a little action here this afternoon. And so is Reggie Lawrence, the running back, number 34. 
I tell you something that I expected to be a big factor today that never really presented itself was the crowd here at Clemson. Normally they're loud and they can they can really influence the, the ebb and flow of a game. Clemson scored a lot early. They never really needed the crowd. Thus they just never really made much noise. They've let their running backs do the talking today. And they have spoken loudly and clearly as Lawrence carries across the 30. Big days for that first team offense. And of course, Henderson coming in running out of the third spot at the tailback position had the biggest day of all. He had two touchdowns on a 41 yard and a 19 yard sprint. And everybody joined in the action. Allen had a 16 yard touchdown run. Rodney Williams took it in from four yards out. Johnson took it in from 15 yards out. And then the freshman Gardaki kicked two field goals and boomed a punt 48 yards. So a lot of pluses for Clemson as they look back at the field. Hewitt's going to throw it. And he underthrows his man, Chip Davis. You know, it used to be said down in Big 8 territory, and you should know this being from that area, they used to say, who has the best backfield in the country? It was Oklahoma's first team. Who has the second best backfield in the country? It was Oklahoma's second team. I think you can start to make some comparisons with Clemson's backfield now. And very, very favorably, excuse me, Ben, th these guys are coming at you in big numbers. And a lot of depth for Clemson. Blake Campbell will punt, and that's their fourth punter. Not many teams go four deep at the punter spot and the quarterback spot in the same game. And he nearly had it blocked. In fact, it may have been partially blocked. But it's going to get a favorable Clemson roll and goes down to the Virginia Tech 45 with a minute and one second remaining. Yeah, that's the second consecutive punt that they should have actually blocked, but he just it doesn't look like he lays out here. It looks like maybe, I don't know if I'll get there or not. See what I'm saying? He was so close to the punter, all he had to do was stretch out, and he would have blocked the punt. Don, Unfortunately, he just got a little hand on it, but they still got the roll. Don Stokes was the man who had it all there for the taking. And Fuhrer is going to finish what he started. He'll quarterback the final minute of this one. Don't be surprised if he tries to challenge him deep now. This time it's Bryant who hand hangs on and gets close to a first down at the Clemson 44. Ed McDaniel back there for the tackle. And they'll run the hurry up with 45 seconds remaining. They'd love to get it in here one more time. Again down the middle, big yardage inside the 35-yard line. And another first down as Greg Daniels makes a catch. When you go back and look at the stats after the game, this is what's known as gimme yardage. Clemson is playing back, not trying to give up the big play, and it's easy to just pick him underneath. Now he's going for it all for Cullen, and he just overthrows him. Nick Cullen, who we hadn't heard from all day long, nearly got a big touchdown play. Tony Mawney was back there defending. I feel a little bit of personal satisfaction now. They finally tried to go deep, and I wanted to see Nick Cullen get a chance to catch the ball. I watched him in practice last week. He seems to be the best pattern runner of anybody, and I wanted to see him get a chance to play today. 25 seconds remaining. Out here to Smith. He makes a nice cut and gets drilled from behind as he gets inside the 30. Mervyn Green, another of those young defensive linemen. Boy, they pursue well, Ben. There, Clemson, you got to realize you're not talking about their first team anymore or their second team or even their third team. They suited up probably about 100 guys a day, and they're trying to get everybody into the ball game. I want to take a moment to thank our spotters, Ginger Littlejohn and Robert Bradley, who've done a fine job for us here in the booth, and our statistician, Tony Britt. Job's well done for us, and they help us put the ball game on for you. And we're going to go down to the field one last time to Chris Allen. Chris? All right, uh, thank you very much. It's been quite a showing for Clemson today here, getting ready for the ACC. But as you keep mentioning, one game does not make a team a national champion. And I'm sure that's what Danny Ford's going to be telling his team in the locker room afterwards before they talk to the media at all, have any comments whatsoever. Well, that's always something to keep in perspective for a team that has such high expectations. And this Clemson team has that. Well, this 1988 edition of Tiger football here in Death Valley is going to be one to be reckoned with. And 
I think a lot of the tale will be told in two weeks when they battle Florida State. They'll at least know how they compare favorably or unfavorably with the rest of the country. Fuhrer bites the dust back at the 45 with 10 seconds left. That may do it. LeVon Kirkland was the man who got in for the seventh sack of the day for Clemson. And Virginia Tech stops the clock with nine seconds remaining. This surprises me that they would call timeouts and keep putting Will Fuhrer in harm's way. The only thing that he can do right now, the game is out of hand. He's already got enough film to look at and learn from. Now all he's doing is giving himself the opportunity to get a blindside shot, maybe lose a knee, twist an ankle, and that's not something you want to do to anybody, much less your starting quarterback. What he's learned, he's already learned today. <laughs> really, yeah. once you got something in your head, you can't knock it any farther in there. Wake Forest impressively opening their ACC season as they def def are defeating Villanova 31-3 in the third quarter. So the Demon Deacons are serving notice that they indeed will be a team to be reckoned with. Yeah, we keep talking about Clemson being having a shot at the national championship. How come we haven't mentioned Duke in contention for the national championship? Because you're here, that's why. <laughs> I'm sure you'll mention it when we go to Duke and do some ball games. <laughs> I'm very impartial. I won't say anything biased towards my old Blue Devils at all. Well, you were one of the 11 uh, blots on Danny Ford's record here at Death Valley. Tell you what, that, was one of the, that was one of the most enjoyable games I've ever come out of. And very thankful to be alive when I was done. Perhaps the final play of the game. Sure is going to air it out for Cullen. He overthrows him, and with two seconds left, they'll have a chance to do it one more time. I believe that was fourth down. That was fourth down. So Clemson will have to take the snap, perhaps, and kill the clock, and that'll do it. Will Fuhrer will take his lesson to the sideline. He hit on 20 of 36 for 115 yards through two interceptions, but his deepest completion was 17 yards, and that pretty well, uh, those statistics, as Ben mentioned, were padded because he played against the second and third team defense for much of the afternoon. And that's a credit to Clemson's first and second teamers for the job that they did to allow the second or the third and fourth teamers to get in. It makes for a fun atmosphere when everybody plays, and that's what Clemson has enjoyed here today. And they'll kill it on that play. This one's in the books, 40 to seven. Clemson opens their season in an impressive way. And Frank Beamer, a tough way to open your season on the road here in Death Valley and against a team loaded with such talent. But there, as we said, for a young team, lessons to be learned, and they learned from one of the best here today. So our opening game telecast, a big victory for Clemson. They beat Virginia Tech 40-7. Thank everyone down in the truck. Chris Allen worked the sidelines so well for us today. For Ben Bennett, I'm Kevin Slayton saying so long from Death Valley in Clemson, South Carolina. We'll see you in two weeks as Georgia Tech battles Virginia.